and during a fatal car accident, Taeyo states that he learned two lessons from this incident, because by losing something important for he, the boy started to value more what he lost, and during his family's wake, he started to feel without confidence, to reconnect with something. After all, he could lose this at any moment, and upon noticing him suspicious, the girl next to him holds his hand and says that she won't leave. And the next day, Taeyo goes to class, and then a group of boys come up to him and ask him to help them with their soccer practice, football. But the boy refuses them for the tenth time, and one of the boys reminds him that they have already been studying together for a month, therefore they should go out together to do something. And upon seeing his friend trying to convince the boy to leave, the colleague next door tells him to give up. After all, Taeyo ended up deleting his nervous. From this they deduce that the boy is just very shy, but Taeyo explains that this is not the case. After all, he would like to be able to talk to the boys, but he is still reluctant to keep to himself. And after the boys gave up on him, Matsumi goes to Taeyo to ask him why he refused to go out with the boys again, and he, he just asks her to leave him alone, but she insists on staying with him, and says that she made him lunch, after all, Taeyo. He practically lives working, and that's why he doesn't have time to eat properly. And meanwhile, the boys stay outside watching the two interact, and one of them comments that Matsumi and Taeyo already, they have been friends since childhood. And then, Matsumi states that he is afraid of seeing his friend alone for the rest of his life, and upon hearing this, Taeyo asks if she thinks it's her mother, and besides, he reminds her that Matsumi keeps refusing Tanaka, who in this case is a handsome young man, intelligent and captain of the football team. In this, she just tells him to get on with his life, as that is what his parents would like to see him do therefore, she suggests that he retrains his social and communication skills, and to begin with she tries to feed him, but Hirokawa enters the middle and eats the food in Teyo's place. Then Matsumi complains to him, because the boy had promised that he wouldn't do that kind of thing anymore, and then Hirokawa says that he ended up not being able to resist the smell of her tamagoyki, and Matsumi remembers that he was supposed to be on a business trip, abroad for a lecture, and he explains that he made some small changes to his schedule, just to be able to eat some of her food, and upon hearing, so, she tells him to return to the vice principal's office. After all, he has already finished doing what he wanted, but Hirukawa says that he still has something to do, and so he asks Taeyo to come to his office when classes are over. And upon hearing this, the boy asks if he did something wrong, but Hirukawa just leaves the place without giving much information. And when the class ends, Taeyo leaves the room, and as he walks through the corridors, he thinks again about the accident that took his life from his family, and explains that he has not been able to connect with anyone since that day. And upon arriving at the vice principal's office, Office, he says he just wanted to show Taeyo his collection of secret photos of Matsumi, and when he sees that the guy has a private gallery with photos of her, Taeyo starts to think Hirukawa is crazier than before. So, Hirukawa begins to explain the origin of each photo, and then Taeyo wonders why a teacher like him would have so many photos of his student, and Hirukawa explains that he comes, taking care of Matsumi secretly for a long time. After all, he wants to protect her from undesirable faces, and as for Tanaka, the teacher states that the boy was very annoying the day before. However, Hirukawa Hirokawa says that he managed to keep him away from Matsumi by having a somewhat warm conversation with the boy and by hearing everything. This, Teo confirms that the professor is indeed a case of psychiatric intervention. In this, the teacher says he envies Teo for him receive a lunch made by her, and then the teacher points a blade at him and says that he was looking at the boy with good eyes. After all, Teo has been friends with Matsumi since childhood, but he claims that now things have changed. Then Teo feels his legs freeze with fear, and the teacher reveals that Matsumi is actually his younger sister. And in the middle of the conversation, a girl appears out of nowhere and uses a device to teleport the boy to another place. In this, he wakes up with Matsumi and a group of strange people, and when he is scared by those people, Teo asks who they are, are, and she explains that everyone there are her brothers, and then she starts by introducing her older sister, called Futaba, and then she introduces Shinzo, her older brother. And as for the girl with pink hair, she presents as Cheyenne, and finally, we have Kengo and Nanao, and in addition to them, Matsumi presents, your Goliath cat. And after all the introductions, she explains that she is part of a family of spies, and upon hearing all this, Taeyo is confused, because he is still not able to assimilate the whole situation. And to make things even clearer, Matsumi explains that they deal with weapons and investigations, but still, he is confused and deduces that she is playing a trick on him. And to get this story straight, Taeyo picks up one of the guns on the table and pulls the trigger, then the gun actually goes off, and then the spies start talking more about what their work, and claim that they lead the ranking on review sites, with 4.8 stars. And furthermore, Kengo explains that his brother Kaioi Ichiro helps the group increase its popularity. After all, he is number one in, in several ways, even in the matter of hate. And when he sees that the person in question is Haruka, Asano is surprised, which is why the spies explain that his name is Hayao Akairo, the eldest son of the Yazakura family. And he is described as a failure in personal matters, but in terms of intelligence and combat power, he can easily be considered the best spy in the family. But Asano remembers that the teacher tried to attack him, so Fataba states that he just, he did this because he is worried about his sister, as there are suspicions that someone is trying 
going to kill her. In this Asano guarantees that there would be no way for them to distrust him. After all, he would never try to do anything bad against Matsumi. And then Fataba explains that they found the information through social media, in which they discovered that Matsumi ended, suffering a near-fatal injury due to Hirukawa. And since then, his feeling of guilt has made him obsessed with protecting his sister, and because of that he changed his name and profession, just to continue secretly watching her, taking care of her daily life and the girl's social interactions, and with that, he ended up transforming into a protective monster. And as for Asano, Hirukawa always hated him, but he gave the boy a teaspoon because he was Matsumi's childhood friend. But now he has some reason to want to get rid of Asano, so she apologizes for her brother being such an idiot and suddenly they hear a bell ringing, and Futaba explains that Hirukawa is heading to that room to finish Asano. But Kengo says he can rest assured because the boy will be safe being with them. So they lock the doors and they activate the traps, and finally, Futaba suggests going down to Hirukawa and beating him up, but they start to do the trick. Accounts for the probability of this going bad, and notes that defeat is almost certain. And Sano in turn, states that he would be risking a lot for him, in which Futaba states that there is only one way for Asano. Survive Hirukawa's fury, and the only way would be to marry Matsumi, because if he does that, Asano will become part of, of the family, and the main rule of the Yazakura family, is that they must not kill each other. And to complete the marriage, they, they should just hand the cherry blossom ring to each other, and as they do so, Hirukawa will no longer be able to kill Asano, and besides, Futaba believes that if Matsumi gets married, he will finally break this relationship. Fetish he has for his own sister. That being said, she states that this marriage will serve to protect them both, but Asano begins to remember the tragedy with her family, and Matumi refuses to marry him precisely for that reason. After all, Asano can barely talk to people after, having lost his entire family, so she claims that it would be very cruel to drag him to another family so suddenly. In this, Fataba apologizes for her insensitivity, and Asano, in turn, feels in an internal conflict, and after that, they, they talk about Hirukawa again, and choose to try to beat him, but Nanao says that they need to think of some strategy, and suddenly they are surprised by Hirukawa, who asks to participate in the meeting too. And then Fataba gets straight to the point, and says that he should stay away from Matsumi and Asano, but Hirukawa says he's not sure. If the boy is really harmless, then she decides to use force against him, and then the other brothers get in the middle of the fight, and Hirukawa states that they really did good teamwork. However, he asks them to stop playing, and give Asano to him, otherwise he will use his steel spider weapon to tear up the entire house. In this, Fataba explains to Asano that she will buy time, so he can escape, but she ends up trapped by Hirukawa's weapon. Then Shion asks Asano to run while she takes care of her brother, and then Hirukawa says that she won't be able to do anything with your current skill level. But still, Shion decides to attack him, and meanwhile, Asano manages to escape, but he is worried about the others, and then, Matsumi reminds him that they will be fine. In the end, they are not allowed to kill each other. With that said, she hides him behind a secret passage. And as for Hirukawa, he finally manages to finish off all of Shion's drones, and then he goes to Matsumi and soon realizes, this is Kengo in disguise. After all, the real Matsumi is the one disguised as Asano. So he asks where she really hid the boy, and upon seeing this scene, Asano wonders what to do, but he thinks, remembers that Matsumi told him to stay hidden regardless of what happened. Then Matsumi asks her brother to stop being suspicious of Asano, as he is not trying to kill her, and then Hirukawa promises, not lay a hand on the boy anymore. But in exchange for that, he asks her not to leave the house anymore. After all, the world is too big, dangerous for her. And besides that, he also asks Matsumi to stay without a phone, as the internet is another dangerous thing. So he hugs her, and states that he would be capable of giving up his own life for the sake of her safety. So he asks her to forget about Asano and go, live a peaceful life alongside your brother. And upon hearing this, Asano comes out of hiding and asks him to let Matsumi go. But Hirukawa says that he shouldn't stick it, his nose in his family's affairs. In this, Asano notices that Hirukawa is just like him, because the teacher is also afraid of losing her, but he still thinks that Hirukawa is the same as him. His overprotection is wrong, and so Asano asks them to get married, so they can work things out, much easier. In this, she throws the ring to him, but before he can reach it, Hirukawa traps him with his threads, and states that he will never, will let him do it, but Asano breaks the lines, and manages to put the ring on his finger. And upon seeing Hirukawa's disappointed face, Futaba goes to him, and says that now he must teach Asano how to protect Matsumi. And when returning home with the ring, Teo remembers that day earlier, and the girls ask if he will be okay, and he immediately confirms that he is. But the boy feels that the one who won't be happy with this story is Hirukawa, but he tries to hide it, saying that they will play on the swing together later. And then, Fataba tells Teo not to worry about Hirukawa, as she will give him a reality check, so that he, he understands the current situation once and for all. So Matsumi goes to Teo to thank him for everything, and returning to the present, the boy finally decides to sleep, but when he wakes up, he is surprised by Hirukawa armed with a knife. Then Teo asks what he's doing there, and he explains that that's the traditional way that members of the Yazakura family usually use it to wake up. But upon hearing this, Teo states that he actually planned to kill him, but Hirukawa states that that is also part of the plan.
plan, training him. After all, if the boy considers himself a spy, he must keep his eyes wide open while he sleeps. That being said, Hirokawa calls him, so they can continue the Yazakura family's morning exercises. Then Matsumi goes to the room to deliver the boy's lunch, and soon sees him being made into a puppet by Hirokawa. But his brother gives the excuse that they are just doing some morning exercise so she doesn't need to worry, and so, Matsumi just looks at him with a lot of hatred, and that's enough for him to understand the message. And out of nowhere Hirokawa throws himself out the window with the two of them, to avoid getting hurt in a sudden explosion, and Teo asks what? What is happening? And Hirokawa explains that that place was equipped with a bomb, so he decides to place his rivalry with Teo on standby, so they can solve this case. But first, he reminds him about the main mission of the Yazakura family, which is to protect Matsumi, so they must stay away. From the scene before the situation becomes even more chaotic, and on the way, Hirokawa says that he just received a report from Shinzo, where he says that he found a fragment in the kitchen, of something that resembles a time bomb, in which case Teo was asked why someone would implant a bomb in his home. Nothing, and Hirokawa states that the target was Matsumi, and as information spreads very quickly there, everyone already knows that she is married to him now, but Teo still remains confused as to why they tried to kill her, so Hirokawa informs him that the reason they tried to end her, she is very simple. In this case, Matsumi is the tenth head of the Yazakura family, and before they actually start working together, he decides to tell a little more about the Yazakura family, and explains that the, the family's lineage can be traced back to the ninjas of the Edo period, who produced generations of descendants with superhuman abilities. But among them, a person known as the Head was always born in every generation, and although the Head has no powers, superhumans like the other members of the family, their children are always raised as superhumans typical of Yazakura, and can inherit incredible powers from Yazakura genes. And because of this, the other members of the family always care about protecting the Head, as it is what makes the family continue to prosper. In other words, Matsumi is the legitimate head of the moment and the Yazakura's lifeline. However, Harukawa states that he and the other brothers don't care so much about the family lineage, as they just want Matsumi to live his life any way you want. But since everyone is risking their lives for the good of the family business, Matsumi says he must fulfill his duty, roll as head of the family, and upon hearing his sister showing so much maturity, Harukawa gets all wet and becomes indignant when remembering that she married Teo. So he gets some tea and talks to the boy again, saying that soon Matsumi will make his debut in the underworld ass leader of the Yazakuras, and because of that, her mission is to obtain knowledge of the common world, and during the conversation, they suffer another enemy attack, but Hirokawa asks everyone to stay calm, as that car is bulletproof, and during the rush, Hirokawa asks his driver to try to drive more smoothly, otherwise his tea will spill, and at the same time, hearing this, Teo is impressed by his calmness, and then Matsumi says that everything will be fine if they hand over everything of the Goliath, however, the enemies insist on following them, thus disturbing tea time. Hirokawa gets angry, and decides to resolve the issue situation on his own, and then he blows up the cars with his tough wires, and then goes to Teo to explain your mission to protect Matsumi from any danger that may arise. After all this is the mission of the Yazakura family, and therefore, Hirokawa states that he will repeat the basics of espionage on him, and Teo's first mission is to protect her from the killers that day. So she goes to school, and Teo starts his mission by doing a quick check of the room, and suddenly knocks them out. His usual colleagues try to talk to him, but Teo makes an irritated face to keep the boys away. And when thinking again about the instructions given by Harukawa, Teo remembers that he gave him the go-ahead to kill anyone, because he promised to hush up this event, in case Teo needs to kill someone. Then Harukawa throws him her cell phone open on an internet profile, and says that Teo will need to protect her from that guy. Profile, and upon reading the subject's description, he discovers that he is a suicide bomber who uses the nickname Tamaya. And then he deduces that this same man is responsible for planting the bomb in his house, and Harukawa states that, this guy's bombs are of high quality, so much so that he himself has already asked for this man's help to sabotage a group, terrorist. And upon hearing that the two already know each other, Teo asks why this guy is against them now, and Hirokawa states that, this kind of thing is more common than he imagines, because in that world enemies and allies change sides with a great deal of change, frequently, even more so if there is money or interests involved. And returning to talking about the bomber, Hirokawa explains that he has a single serious defect, which is his addiction to networks, social media, and there he started posting several meaningless poems recently, but in addition, he also posts about his targets and the progress of your attack. And although the bomber has this fatal error, Hirokawa orders Teo not to let his guard down, as his enemy has a nature completely distorted. In this he explains that the guy usually plays with his victims using some bigger bombs, light at first, and in the end, finish him off with one of your most powerful bombs. And since this enemy is stupid, he had already announced on the networks that he only has three bombs to use against Teo and Matsumi, and one of these bombs is the one that demolished his house, so he will only have two more bombs now. And returning to the present, Teo stays alert during class, but soon realizes 
realizes that there is no bomb in the place, and when they go to physical education, he checks his cell phone again, and discovers through Tamaya's profile that the second bomb has already been dropped, armed somewhere. In this, he gets distracted and ends up getting hit in the forehead, but he gets up quickly when he sees a figure passing by corridor window, and arriving at the infirmary room, he is approached by a teacher who asks if he is okay in that. He talks and returns to the room quickly, and there, the students talk about a supposed UFO that was seen at that school, and then another student says that there is also reports of alien appearances around the place, and to make matters worse, students claim that these aliens are capable of imitating the appearance of other humans. To this one of the girls says that an upper-class woman was on her way to the bathroom, and suddenly she saw herself leaving the bathroom, and upon hearing all this, Matsumi tells them to forget about these aliens, after all these rumors are becoming more and more fanciful. And meanwhile, Teo discovers that Tamaya has already implanted the last bomb, and when he returns to reflect on Matsumi herself, he notices that even though she is in a different situation than the others, she always behaves like a normal girl, and he deduces that she does this precisely to fight against her own destiny, and suddenly, those boys go to him once again, and unlike before, Teo greets them normally, but when being called by his name, he goes back into shock, but decides to control himself, otherwise he won't be able to protect Matsumi. In this, he blacks out and wakes up in a room at school, and then he asks Matsumi if she really thinks he is the person right for her. After all, even if he was her childhood friend, Teo definitely didn't know anything about Matsumi and about her life being in constant danger. And even with all these problems, she always remained by his side, and in contrast, Teo believes that he was, thinking only about him this whole time, and what's more, even their wedding was done only by him in a moment of euphoria, where he wanted to protect her. In this Matsumi reprimands him, and states that she had already chosen him as her husband before, and besides, the situation of her family. The fact made him refuse to marry her at first, and during the conversation, he notices a bomb under Matsumi's head, which explodes, drawing the attention of all the students in this. They manage to save themselves, but Teo wonders how Tamaya knew they would be in that specific place, and when, thinking a little more, he remembers remembers that the infirmary was closed, so that would be the only place he could go. And in addition, he locates the last bomb in his shirt, and deduces that Tamaya had already planned it all from the beginning, announcing his movements on purpose with the intention of making him stay close to Matsumi at all times, so that, so he would blow himself up next to her. And then he throws himself out of the window to prevent it from suffering damage from the bomb, in which Harukawa saves him with his threads, and explains that that mini-bomb has a huge impact, even though it is very small, but it has two flaws. The first is that, it takes longer to activate as it uses the target's body heat to do so. And the other fatal flaw is that this bomb can easily be deactivated with a wire. That being said, Hirukawa congratulates him on it. Having noticed this bomb in time to save Matsumi, and as a reward for completing the mission, he proposes to tell something for Teo about that world. And he says that the boy can count 100% on his new family, Yazakura, because even if he wants to kill him, Hirukawa doesn't intend to let him die, even if he needs to sacrifice himself to keep him alive. And after that, the brothers all get together to see the outcome of Teo's first mission and Shinzo throws one of the enemies against the ground, which asks Hirukawa for mercy, but he simply throws him away and explodes him in the air. And then Teo goes back to looking at the messages on Tamaya's profile, where he says that the bomb just exploded, at which Matsumi gives, like this message, to make it clear that she is still alive. And at night Matsumi starts to want to take Tao to her house but her brother objects, but she says that he shouldn't object to that after all. They are already husband and wife, but Hirukawa doesn't like that at all, so he comes close to Tayo says that the Osaka family's beds are very good. He might not even get up in the morning the next day. And the next day, Teo has a nightmare where he fails in his mission to protect Matsumi, but when he wakes up he notices that all that was nothing more than a dream, and then he starts to remember everything that happened the day before in relation to the events involving the bombs. And when he gets up, Teo accidentally steps on Goliath's tail and ends up suffering the consequences of this carelessness. In this Matsumi bandages his arm and explains that he had asked the Goliath to keep guard over him as his brother could return to attack him just like that time. And then, Matsumi starts to caress Goliath with a certain force, leaving Teo worried, but she explains that Goliath would never attack her either, and after that, Teo goes to Futaba and asks her to make him stronger, and she promptly offers to help him in this regard, after all they were already planning to train him little by little. But upon hearing this, Teo states that training little by little is inefficient, after all he almost died in his last attempt to save Matsumi, so he wants to get stronger for her, and then Futaba starts spinning the boy at the speed of light, and explains that the process is slow even for her who has the Yazakura talent, and for him who is a human, his evolution will take even longer. That being said, Futaba makes it clear that he must put an end to his flustered emotions, after all he won't be able to survive the training. If he keeps them, however, she believes he can make good use of the strong feelings he has for Matsumi, and then, she proposes doing a total workout with him, Yazakura style. And upon hearing this, Teo starts to get excited, but Futaba puts a condition on the table.
possible, in this case, he will need to live in that mansion for a month, especially because his house was completely destroyed by bombs, so they will take this one month break, until he actually started training. In this, Teo decides to approach her to thank her for her willingness to train him, but in doing so, he ends up falling into trouble. One of the traps, but Teo manages to hold on before being pierced by the blades below his feet. And then, Futaba apologizes for not having warned her sooner, and makes it clear that that mansion is full of traps too. Espionage training, which means that living in that place in itself can already be considered training, and therefore, he must master these beginner level traps as quickly as he can, otherwise he will never be able to advance. For full training. And the next day, he wakes up to an explosion in his room, and then Futaba explains that he did it on purpose, to train him to get up in the blink of an eye at any time, and Teo is amazed at the fact that Matsumi can live in that place without going through so much trouble. However, Matsumi states that the house's traps do not activate for her, and Shion explains that everyone who manages to be accepted by the house are also not attacked, but upon hearing this, Teo remains confused, and then Shion explains that the traps of the house are controlled by a computer. Therefore, if he manages to circumvent all the traps, demonstrating that he is more expert than the computer, he gains authority to turn the traps on and off as you please. Generally speaking, Shion summarizes this perk as a bonus he gets after passing all the tests, but for now, Nanao tells him that he must eat to stay nourished, however, he informs him that there is a certain amount of poison in the food, so, make him gain tolerance against poisons. Then Teo runs desperately to the bathroom, and then Shion explains that to gain access to the room, he must break into it, the lock, and enter a password, which, by the way, changes every minute, so Kaioichiro goes to Matsumi to say good morning, and comes back, praising her like cattle. And as for Teo, he asks for help to able to enter the bathroom, and with that, his rigorous daily life in the house. Yasakura begins, and then he gradually improves his skills in different areas, but when he arrives at school, the boys in his class notice him visibly exhausted, as if he were about to have a seizure. In this, Teo reveals that he received a very heavy shirt from the Yasakura as part of his training, and upon returning home exhausted, he notices Matsumi working late, and soon welcomes her with a blanket, so he takes the opportunity to go and practice shooting at his side, outside the house, but notices that even up close his aim is horrible, and when he thinks better, he remembers that even turning on the TV is a very difficult task, but he returns his focus to the mission, and decides to try a few more shots, but Matsumi comes to him and advises him to take a brief break from his training, so the two come in to have tea, and then, Teo apologizes for waking her up with the gunshots, and as for her, Matsumi asks if he wasn't trying hard, too much, and upon hearing this, the boy chokes on his tea, and she says that he doesn't need to lie to her, because the Matsumi herself is already aware that the reason for all his effort is her, and then, Teo says that this is not quite true, but Matsumi reaffirms that the boy is really very hardworking, in that she has a memory of them in childhood, and says that they were never so close, however that changed from the moment they, they went to elementary school together, and speaking of that period of his life, Matsumi remembers the problems that his lock of silver hair caused him, when a group of girls approached her, asking if Matsumi was trying to attract attention with that different hair, in that case, Matsumi explains that his hair color has disappeared, but one of the girls gets stressed, and says that all she had to do was color her hair again, and the problem would go away, but, Matsumi informs her that her hair doesn't take color no matter what she does, and upon hearing this, the girl decides to cut her hair, because that way they can resolve things more easily, but at that moment, Teo intervenes, taking the scissors from the girl's hand, and then he starts cutting his own hair, so Matsumi tells him to stop doing that, and as for the girls, they are scared by that scene and leave, and then, Teo explains that his advisor advised him to cut his bangs, and for him, that was the best time to, to do this, and as for her, he asks Matsumi to keep him in the loop in case other people are threatening her, and returning to the present, she explains that he has been protecting her since that time, and that's why she asks him to try not to get involved, try so hard, and the next day, he returns to live in the house, dodging all the traps, and when training his shot again, Shinzo notices, he's holding the gun the wrong way, and then he corrects Teo's posture, and explains that the gun should be held in a highest point on your body, as this way the weapon will not recoil as much after firing, and in the middle of training, Shion shares Teo's new victory, saying that now he is able to turn on the TV, and besides, Shion presents Shinzo with the Teo's performance data that he had asked her to analyze. In this, Teo thanks them both, but he shows curiosity about Shinzo's strange way of acting, and then Shion explains that he is the laziest and shyest brother of all, and that is why he lives most of his time hidden in that trash can. But in his defense, Shinzo states that Shion also only lives in her room, and she, in turn, changes the subject, and remembers Teo, that he needed to go talk to Nanao about how to deal with the poisonous gases, and so he runs towards Nanao. Then Shinzo comments to his sister that Teo actually has a lot of talent. 
and Cheyenne notices that he is advancing at a speed above normal, which means he has a lot of talent for that. And meanwhile, Kengo complains to Futaba about the weight of the books he is carrying, but she claims that it is a punishment for not washing the dishes that morning. And moving further, they come across Teo training, and then Kengo tries to escape his commitment by going to talk to he, however, Futaba stops him right away and says that they must continue doing their obligations. And the next day, Teo manages to deal with the laser trap a little better and reaches the kitchen quickly in that Matsumi is impressed by how easily he is having to go down the stairs and corridors, and Teo explains that this is due to, to the fact that he had already been there for three whole weeks. But when drinking the poisoned milk, Teo runs to the bathroom once again, and Cheyenne notices that even though he's been there for three weeks, he is still struggling to deal with that door. Then Kengo and the others go to him and find Teo fallen on the floor breathing heavily. And after that, the boy wakes up in a room and under Nanao's care, and they notice that Teo has passed out due to a fever caused by her extreme mental fatigue. And then Futaba says, Says that she already warned Matsumi about his situation, so Teo must just rest to recover as soon as possible. However, he says he is fine and will continue to live in the house next week, as he will complete a month so. As Futaba had proposed to him, but she explains that the way he is going, he doesn't have the slightest chance of surviving. And then, Futaba explains that to achieve extraordinary results, it is necessary to make an extraordinary effort. Also, in this she criticizes her other brothers for coming up with this suicide mission for him, but Teo says that they have no, no fault, after all everyone tried to stop him from doing that, but he was resistant to continue doing his best, even that this could cost his life. After all, Teo wanted to be able to protect Matsumi as quickly as possible. And upon hearing this, Futaba hits him in the forehead, saying that he will be unable to protect her if he is not able to protect her himself first. And furthermore, Futabad says that if he is truly eager to protect Matsumi, he has to understand that your training process will be slow and without shortcuts. Having said that, she gives him an old book of hers, and asks him to study it until he recovers, so he won't be a hundred years old, percent stopped and doing nothing. Then Futaba leaves the room and notices that what keeps the boy alive is not just his talent or hard work but her emotion and with that, she deduces that the love he feels for Matsumi must be bordering on the level of insanity and so, she starts to believe that the boy is in fact a good candidate to protect her sister. And after recovering, Teo finally manages to open the bathroom door and everyone celebrates by throwing it up. But upon seeing all this excitement, Kaioichiro says that there is no reason to celebrate so much. And suddenly his wedding ring ring starts to glow, and Futaba explains that the object is just reacting to the waves, magnets of the house, and this means that he was finally recognized by the house as a member of the Yazakura family, and so, she walks up to him, and congratulates him for all his effort during that last month, and so, she finally decides to train him vigorously as a Yazakura, and Teo is excited by the news, but, Shinzo appears to give her a 100 kilo shirt, and Shinzo decides to change the difficulty level of the traps from normal to very difficult, thus making Teo's life even more complicated. After Teo Finalito be accepted by the house, Matsumi is preparing a meal and everything is normal, until she throws a kind of poison energy drink into the food, it really had to be an e-girl. Soon after, the kitten already judges Teo, after all he is wearing a bra and asking her if he is wearing it correctly, and she gets scared and puts more manipulated energy drinks in his food, and then he says it's not what she's thinking, he was just testing it and tries to explain himself. However, Matsumi looks like she saw something she shouldn't have, so she says that she doesn't need to explain herself, that she will support whatever tastes he may have and he responds by saying that he was testing the spy disguise, that's all, shouting at her look him in the eyes. Then a woman appears asking if she should show him how it's done, and when Shinzo enters the room he comes across too and along with the kitten bullying Teo. Then Shinzo thinks that Teo was opening up the relationship, and the woman hugs Teo and says suspicious things, but Teo takes off his disguise revealing that it was Kengo all this time. Kaioichiro arrives in the room talking about Siskon and is already punched to make him smart, and then the kitten Goliath is already beaten by Kengo who had also received a light beating. Opening, Shinzo and Teo talk about a mission that Shinzo will carry out to recover a plate involving counterfeit money, however Shinzo takes advantage and says he has something for him. Then the scene changes to Teo saving Matsum from a baseball that was heading towards them, however he held the ball without even looking and returned it at a tremendous speed, and when the coach tries to recruit him, he continues on his goal ignoring. So on the terrace the two are enjoying their meals and Matsum tells him that he didn't realize but he is becoming a superhuman thanks to the training. Then, she even talks about people not noticing his steps and calling him a ninja, so she tells him to be careful so he doesn't end up revealing himself and then gives him food in his mouth, all happy with his progress. Then she takes away the food and our friend is left in a vacuum because she remembered something and then asks him to meet her after school. Soon after, Mutsum is skillfully sorting through and approving and disapproving a stack of documents, and then she says that real estate management, financing, and stock investing are all part of the boss's job. And in one of these she says that her big brother has several fake divorce requests that he used to escape 
and for Teo to make sure he burns them all. Then a document appears and is destined for Kengo, but not seeing much of an option they go to him, where he says he is busy, and when they open the door they come across a gigantic pile of clothes where he appears shortly after. Mutsum starts giving him that scolding, and tells him to attach the paperwork documents that he forgot again. In this Kengo even says that one or two documents are barely enough, and he already pulls food out of nowhere that has certainly been there for days and sends it inside. So Mutsum starts to complain to him, and to ease his feelings, Teo goes looking for the documents and calls him to help look, and Kengo tells him to be careful, but then Teo pulls out a grenade and then Kengo says who has weapons scattered around the room. And the guy doesn't have a good idea, he leaves as he came into the world, then saying that he is a free spirit and that no one can convince him to do things he doesn't want to do. So Mutsum even tells him to put on some clothes and he says it's cool that they used to take baths together when they were little, and she used to be adorable, but now she's become a pain in the ass, so we realize Mutsum is getting more and more irritated. Then she says it's time to discipline him as the head of the Yasakura family, but Kengo already smiles and leaves the room, and when Teo comes in front, he disguises himself as Mutsum and in the blink of an eye leaves the room. Then Mutsum approaches and says he was very naive and tells his ring, hibernation, then walls rise surrounding everything around preventing Kengo from escaping. Next we see Shinzo on his mission, he crawls between a ventilation duct and puts on his glasses that allow him to zoom, sweat x-rays and even record videos. In this, he analyzes a box where he identifies several plates of counterfeit money, and is extremely amazed by such technology and also notes the high security that surrounds everything. When someone suddenly appears who would be the owner of that clandestine establishment, after being greeted by the guard he starts to brag about the fact that his company commands 60% of the market. Then Shinzo hears him talking about someone else who is trying to pull some strings for this whole operation. In sequence, Shinzo, with his mastery, immobilizes two guards and enters the room, but he fell into a double trap and the alarm is sounded and then a shootout begins. Next we see Mutsum's room, and Teo is impressed by the piano, guitar, painting, and all her other hobbies that hover over the room, so she says that she couldn't leave and that helped her relax, but Teo realizes that she took out her anger from stress in her painting, in this case Kaioichiro as the villain of the art. Then the two enter Shyan's room, and she says that she knows they must be looking for Kengo but that he didn't come by, all this while he was planting a handstand, when she suddenly falls and claims that she is terrible at physical games. After Mutsum thanks her, she goes to Futaba's room, where she concludes that it would be worse than hell to wake her up, so she's sure he's not there. Then he visits Nanao and believes that Kengo didn't pass by either, after all he would die from all that gas. Then they go to Goliath the kitten's room and she assumes that he didn't go there either, and Teo is impressed by how incredible Goliath's room is, even having a tank. So they only have one room left, and they enter Kaioichiro's room, where we see several paintings with Mutsum's face, the guy is really a siskon and he doesn't even hide it. When we look at Teo he is astonished by everything and Mutsum is no longer surprised, but when she leaves the room we see the appearance of a smile, in this case Kengo was there disguised as her. Then Teo wonders if he's actually out there, and Mutsum tells him that it's impossible to escape hibernation. Then Futaba, Nanao, and Shyan appear and ask what they were doing, and then Mutsum soon asks where they were. Then the three reveal that they were experimenting with a product that they confiscated from a cartel last week, but Futaba complains saying that the product was only 10% pure and that you no longer find cartels like you used to. Then Mutsum and Teo look at each other and realize what had just happened, but before reaching the conclusion Kengo appears with his face in a painting on the wall, Kangalisa. Then a chase begins with the two behind him, who jumped around the house like a feline, but he is very fast and loses Teo. And when Mutsum arrives she realizes that he fled through a secret passage that was in the wall, so she screams in frustration that he lost her, however Teo tries to console her saying that she did a good job above all. Then she sighs and disables hibernation, so Teo tells them to look for this documentation themselves. And when the two arrive at Kengo's room, Mutsum handcuffs Teo and says that he did well, calling him Kengo and then says that it is impossible to escape hibernation, and that was why he needed her to deactivate it. That's why he dressed up as Teo and hid it somewhere in their mismatch. So she still says that whenever Teo opens he lets you through a door first, and then praises how incredible he is at noticing details about the people he disguises himself as, but that he still lacks some details. And then Kengo sees his mother's reflection in her and remembers a memory from the past where his mother asked him to take good care of his little sister, and then he extends his hand to Mutsum. Kengo then admits defeat and says she caught him, calling her boss immediately afterwards. Then Teo and Kengo continue looking for the documents and Kengo apologizes to Teo. So Teo says it's fine and he doesn't have to worry, after all, Mutsum seemed to be having a lot of fun while smiling. Soon after, Kengo's heart found empathy and told the boy not to call him so formally, after all he is only one year older than him. Then Teo finds the document and is praised by Kengo. Meanwhile Mutsum was at the door listening to everything and smiles as he goes about his business. Then Kayakairo enters the room and begins to lament. His favorite painting was scribbled and on it was written, you promised not to display this without my permission, so the boy continues to lament. In the next scene we see Teo 
tasting the dish that Mutsum was preparing full of manipulated energy drink and he says it is delicious and she is very happy for the compliment. Then Teo notices that Shinzo is taking a long time when Mutsum reveals the secret ingredient of the food he was enjoying so much and he has no reaction. Soon after, the phone rings and when Teo goes to answer it he realizes it's on Shinzo's line and when he answers it he only hears Shinzo screaming for Mutsum to save him. Then Mutsum switches to the video and tells his brother to calm down but he continues crying and asking him to be saved. Then she reminds him that at times like this he should remember how many bullets his gun can hold and he starts counting while Teo doesn't understand anything. After telling the whole story, Mutsum understands that he had more enemies than Shinzo imagined and after exchanging shots he ran out of ammunition and is cornered. Then Mutsum tells us that Shinzo is a super weapons expert but without them he's just a super coward. Then she looks at Teo and he is already amazed and in the next scene, Teo is camouflaged with weapons in his bags. Then he receives a communication from Mutsum who will guide him while calming down Shinzo who is not cool at all. After she tells him to be careful, he enters the enemy barracks. Then he hears Mutsum telling Shinzo a song about a battlefield where there was a mercenary grandfather and a combat obsessed grandmother and he sits there without understanding how that could be relaxing. In this, Mutsum says that his grandfather went up the mountain to massacre retarded people and his grandmother went up the river to massacre them. However, we are interrupted by an extra pointing a gun at Teo. So Teo remembers Shinzo's teachings and friends don't repeat that otherwise you will play football in paradise. In this Shinzo tells him to be agile, by retreating backwards he can neutralize the firing mechanisms of a semi-automatic, lock the weapon in his hand and after a blow on the chin. And so Teo neutralized the NPC, however he caught the attention of the surrounding guards with the noise and he tries to remain calm, after all panicking would only make the whole situation worse, and in the meantime Mutsum continues worrying about him on his cell phone. After concentrating, Teo identifies three enemies, and starts to kneel the guy in a street fight, the other guy grabs him from behind in a very suspicious situation, and the NPC's friend goes with a knife to Teo, saying that the other is very masculine and just testing. Then Teo neutralizes the stab with his million dollar outfit, and then sends the nutcracker to the NPC who was holding him from behind. We then see a flashback where Shinzo gave him a gun and he pulls it out, then it is revealed that it was a stun gun and Teijo neutralizes the security guard's equipment. Then Teo enters the room where Shinzo was and Shinzo immediately hugs him saying he was very scared and it was good to finally see him. Meanwhile, some guards enter the room, then Shinzo changes his appearance and drops the steel, now with his weapons back and assumes an armored pose. So we are transported to an action film, Shinzo simply goes around cauterizing all the extras that pass his way, he uses a shield extra, he uses a spear extra, the only thing missing is to use him as a girlfriend because otherwise he went there and did it. So he throws a grenade and tells Teo to hurry, however Teo is hit in his leg and the sniper threatens to drag the boy up. In this, Shinzo just accepts, but Teo remembers Mutsum's instructions that he needs to arm him with anything to give him confidence if he gives up his weapons for some reason. Then Shinzo throws the gun at high speed, completely destroying the sniper's barrel, so he cold-bloodedly takes a few shots and precisely shoots the sniper, who recognizes him as a tremendous monster. Next we see Shizno apologizing to Teo and the same apologizing to Shinzo, and they both have a really nice chat, and Shinzo says that he's fine even though now he's unarmed he wants to be stronger and has to get used to it little by little, in this case he was talking about carrying the Teo and not being able to draw a gun. Then Shinzo ends his speech saying that it may not seem like it, but he is Teo's older brother. In this we see that someone with a bloody hammer came out cleaning up with some NPCs who refused to reveal the contractor and then we see Teo's photo on his cell phone and saying that he will be his next target. And when walking through the streets, Teo talks with Matsumi on the phone, in which she comments on the couple who argued that day. Previous, but the very next day they announced they were dating, and then went for a ride on the matchmaking Ferris wheel, a superstitious place, where people say that when a couple watches the sunset together in this place, they will surely live happy forever. In this Matsumi suggests that they take a walk in this place also on their next day off and during the conversation, Teo notices the approach of a suspicious man and decides to end the call and then the man introduces himself as Hotokiyama, a police officer from the Koizumi police station. So the two go to the police station and the police officer gets straight to the point by showing a photo of Teo posted on the dark web. And upon seeing this the boy starts to worry and as for Hotokiyama, he continues showing the images and presents a video of Teo using a firearm and trespassing on private property. And in addition, the police officer also shows images where the boy participates in a car chase on public roads, placing the lives of everyone around at risk, and finally, he comments on the time Teo blew up his school with the help of a homemade bomb. Having said all that, Hotokiyama asks if Teo intends to become some kind of god of youth crime, and he explains that in among these images there are crimes he did not commit. In this, the policeman notices that all these crimes are beyond the child's capacity, so he starts to suspect that Teo is involved in some kind of secret organization, and then he tells the boy to start 
telling everything he knows, however. Teo refuses to hand over his family and says he doesn't know what he's talking about. Hotokiyama asks the boy to have a glass of water and think better about his answer, but Teo notices that the police officer blatantly spills some substance in the drink, but he reassures him, saying it's just some minerals. And then he forces Teo to drink the glass, and the boy again says he doesn't know anything, but the policeman starts attacking him, making the boy fall on top of another guy. Hotokiyama explains that that man on the ground was a drug dealer who was shot down by him. That said, he puts Teo against the wall, literally, and the boy begins to question whether that man really is a police officer, in which Hotokiyama states that if Teo doesn't tell him anything, he will ask his classmates personally. And then, Teo remains firm in his decision, and says he won't reveal anything, and noticing the boy's insistence, the police officer agrees. A blow to the wall completely breaks it, then Kyoichiro emerges from the wreckage, and complains, saying that all that mess, it could have gotten your precious suit dirty. Then Teo asks them to tell him what's going on, and then Kyoichiro explains that Hotokiyama was one of his elementary school classmates. And in order to have the Yazakura family's actions covered up, they decided to make a deal with the police officer, where they, I would help with your investigations in exchange for your silence. And as for Hotokiyama, he complains about the way Kyoichiro does things, because he is adding his younger brother on the mission very suddenly. However Kyoichiro states that labor is always a good thing, and as for the boy, Hotokiyama states that he passed the test. After all, Teo didn't betray his family and didn't fall for their provocations, so he says he's eager to work next to Teo. And as for Kyoichiro, he notices that he is late for his next mission and leaves, and after that, Teo goes to school, demonstrating a complete lack of will. And suddenly, Kyoichiro enters the room and informs the students that Akutayama is taking a day off to resolve a problem. Urgent matter, which is why he will be taking over the modern Japanese class that day. And during class, Teo starts feeling his eyelids getting heavier and heavier, and then he starts to close his eyes, slowly to take a nap, but Kyoichiro wakes him up right away, and explains that a spy needs to control even the your own sleep patterns. In this he gives the example of dolphins, which only turn off half of their brain, which causes them to remain in a state continuous awakening, and he states that this technique is also possible for humans to achieve as long as they train very. And in his case, Kyoichiro says that he graduated from total sleep at the age of 15. That being said, he tells Teo to become an expert, because if the boy goes back to sleep, he will discover that a chalk is also capable of flying at the speed of sound, and upon seeing this, Matsumi, he says that his brother should hold back and be less strict with Teo. In that Kyoichiro says that she is very cute when she is angry, and as for Teo, he says that she can calm down, because, he will be able to do this lyrical training, and upon hearing this, Kyoichiro is anxious to find out how long this shitty thing will last. Boy will it last. And then he throws a drowsy gas into the room, to make Teo's life even more difficult, so Matsumi puts on a mask, to protect herself, and tells her brother to stop doing these things, but he praises her for always equipping her safety items, and she, in turn, states that she never thought about using this mask in this context. In this Kyoichiro explains that that gas is very powerful, as it puts anyone to sleep in seconds, and upon hearing, that's it, Matsumi looks at Teo apparently unconscious, and then Kyoichiro does what he said, and throws the chalk at the boy's direction, but Teo quickly protects himself against the attack, but Matsumi notices that he did this while he was still sleeping, and with this, Kyoichiro notices that the boy has finally reached the half-awake state. Then Matsumi complains to his brother, saying that he wants to turn Teo into a real monster, but he says, who is doing this for her and Teo's sake, and then he attacks the boy again with the chalk, and notices that he is sending, very well for a first awakening. And upon returning home, Matsumi notices that Teo has developed a degree of sleepwalking due to Kaioikyo's training, and on the day, next, Teo reads a magazine about how to improve your relationship, and he discovers that marriage between spies usually, end in divorce in 90% of cases, because with the exaggerated accumulation of work the connections between the couple end, being left aside. And in the middle of his reading, Matsumi goes to him to serve him some tea, so he takes the opportunity to try to ask her out. However, he is interrupted by a call from an unknown number, and when he answers the phone, he hears Hotokiyama calling him for an emergency mission. In this he passes the location to Teo, and tells him to go to the location immediately, and when he gets there he returns the call, and Hotokiyama informs that there is a man and a woman hiding in the amusement park carrying illicit weapons, so he sends Teo arrest them. But suddenly, Matsumi appears at the location out of nowhere, and explains that Teo would look very suspicious if he were there. Place alone, so she is there to help you with that. But Teo states that participating in that mission could put her at risk, so Matsumi asks him to keep it down, as the couple in question could be anywhere, and besides, she claims to be safe being there with him, in which Teo remembers that Matsumi isn't the target there, so he doesn't need to worry about her too much. And besides, Teo notes that this could be the perfect time for the two of them to have a fun date, 
and after one time, they they notice a couple heading towards the roller coaster, and so Matsumi suggests following them. But after they enter the toy, Teo ends up sleeping in the middle of it all, and apologizes to Matsumi for that, and how much. To her, Matsumi notices that the suspicious couple are apparently just on a normal date, and Teo claims that they just, they appear to be bad people. And then, they focus on the other two couples, where they all have fun on another toy, and when they leave, they decide, go to the last couple, and notice them having tea normally. At which point Matsumi gets up to go get some drinks for them too, and as for Teo, he continues listening to the guy's conversation. Couple, the boyfriend tells the girl that he has a special order item in hand, and upon hearing this, Teo starts to get suspicious, and decides to leave his weapon ready for emergency cases, however, the man simply takes a promise ring out of his pocket and asks his girlfriend to marry him, and Teo hits him with his hand, head on the table full of frustration, because not only is he taking up the Matsumi time, he is also unable to find the couple with guns, and suddenly, another man's girlfriend starts yelling at her partner, saying that he was looking at someone else, woman, and then the two start to fight, until suddenly the two pull out their weapons and start playing counter, strike in real life, then the customers run out of the establishment, and Teo goes to a boy under a table to protect him, and when he sees, the rose he intended to give to Matsumi was destroyed, Teo decides to put an end to that situation by shooting the criminals, and then he sends them to resolve their love intrigues in a place that doesn't involve other people, and after that, the police are called to go to the restaurant, and the couple ends up being arrested in the act, Hotokiyama, he congratulates Teo for the good work he did that day, and says he owes him one. And as for Kaioichiro, he is uncomfortable with Hotokiyama, because he sent Teo and Matsumi to have a date at a park. Entertainment, which makes him completely angry. And in the middle of Kaioichiro's little show, Shion ends up passing him, but decides to just ignore him, and meanwhile, Teo and Matsumi decide to take a ride on the matchmaking Ferris wheel, and as they watch the sun set on the horizon, Matsumi comments about that day being very tiring. However, she feels better when she remembers that they managed to buy souvenirs for both of them, as well as having fun together. All the attractions in the park, then Teo asks why she chose to ride the ferris wheel last, and Matsumi explains, that couples who see the sunset from that ferris wheel live happily ever after. And upon hearing this, Teo takes courage and gives her the rose even though the flower is messy after being shot, and then, he explains that his goal that day is to give her a pleasant moment, to thank her for everything she has been doing, by him. And upon seeing this scene, Matsumi gets emotional, and says that she didn't expect to see Teo acting like that, and they both thank each other for, are always helping each other, and the, and after finishing a game of 80 hours in a row, Cheyenne finally decides to go to sleep, but another player tells her to, an urgent mission for her, making her have to stay in the game longer, in which Cheyenne tries to harm the player, back bugging her PC, but the player simply unplugs the computer and plugs it back in, and the next day, when Cheyenne meets the others, Teo notices her a little strange, and asks if the girl is, well, and she explains that someone broke into the database the day before, and was apparently trying to steal some data, from Teo, but she makes it clear that the hacker was unable to steal any important information. But Cheyenne still doesn't understand how this person managed to get into the database, after all, to have access to this, the, a person needs to have a code that only the Yazakura brothers know, and upon hearing this, Teo soon has a bad feeling. And on the way to school, Mitsumi wonders why someone would try to steal information regarding Teo, and he why. In turn, he states that this situation in itself is already very scary, regardless of the reason that led the person to do it. And halfway through, they are surprised by the hacker girl, who tries to hit them with some needles, but Teo notices. The attack right away and manages to protect Mitsumi from the attacks, and when they run from the girl, she chases them until they reach an alley. Then Teo asks who she is, and the girl just calls him master, and kindly asks him to die. And then, Mitsumi recognizes her by her assassin threads and needles, and calls her Ayaka Kurosaki, a hunting spy who, is known for bad reasons, after all she uses her spy skills to stalk the men she falls in love with, and in, then kills them with her killer needles. In this Kurosaki explains that Teo is his new passion, and in addition he became famous in the underworld through his video posted on the dark web and because of that an underworld company offered a bounty of $100,000 on his head and although this is something terrible for him Kurosaki feels excited about this whole situation and as for Teo he shows dissatisfaction to see that they chose a photo in extremely bad taste to put on the poster and while they talk Kurosaki captures another spy who was trying to kill him and says he will need to deal with him before someone else actually managed to kill him and upon hearing this Teo becomes even more scared about everything and Kurosaki says that he is also aware of all the his hidden charms, so she tells him to give in to her call, but the boy explains that he is already married to Mitsumi, and to protect her he cannot allow himself to be killed. And upon hearing this, Kurosaki says that he just doesn't end up with Mitsumi because he promised Kaioichiro that he wouldn't do that, but as for the Teo, he said allowed her to do whatever she wanted with the boy as long as she didn't hurt Mitsumi. And in addition, Kaioichiro also allowed her to examine all of Teo's data, and granted her the access code to the database. Given 
without even hesitating and having explained everything, Kurisaki fills the alcohol with his needles to intimidate them but soon turns around, with his back turned, saying he will come back later. And after that, they go to school, and upon arriving in the classroom, the teacher introduces a new student, who in this case is the Ayaka Kurisaki herself, and as soon as she sits down at her desk, she stumbles on purpose, just to try to kill the Teo with one of his needles, but he manages to protect himself with the book. And after returning from break, the boy finds his chair full of needles, thus the murder attempts. They persist throughout the class, but Teo continues to defend himself from all of the girl's advances. And then, Kurisaki is disappointed when seeing that he is insisting on not accepting her feelings, that's what she says to herself. Even though she must continue investing in him, until the boy finally understands how she feels about him and responds to her feelings. Feelings. And at one point, she injects a needle with mind control poison into all the students, causing them to lose momentarily their identities and obey her as faithful servants, in which she orders the students to hunt the Teo, and they, they quickly manage to immobilize him. However, Mitsumi enters the middle of it all, and orders Kurisaki to undo the effects of the poison she applied to the students. And in the middle of all this confusion, the spy that Kurisaki knocked out, appears there too and tries to kill her, but Mitsumi saves her. And as for Teo, he shoots the spy, knocking him out the window. Then Kurisaki asks why she saved her, and Mitsumi says he was happy to see that she also admires Teo, although the girl does it in a somewhat agitated way as she wants to kill him. And upon hearing this, Kurisaki feels that this is the definition of true love, so she says that she loves Mitsumi, and leaves holding on to her. Her after classes ended. And then, Mitsumi finds this sudden change in the girl strange, after all, not long ago she was in love with Teo, and Kurisaki says that she still intends to kill him, so she can live happily ever after with Mitsumi. And suddenly, Teo's cell phone starts to vibrate, and when he picks it up, he notices that it's a call from Cheyenne, and when he gets home, she presents his new opening, which is a Teo edition game room, and when he finds himself in this situation, he wonders what is doing there, and Mitsumi explains that her sister Cheyenne always looks for someone to play with her, and Teo was the person of the moment, after all Shinzo ended up turning off after playing with her for five nights in a row, and upon hearing this, Teo feels that his life is in danger. Cheyenne's hands, but the girl tells him not to worry so much, after all she will only do a test with him that night. With that said, they start the game, and Teo continues to find that situation very suspicious, and Cheyenne says that the rules of the game are very simple, as he just needs to eliminate the enemies that appear and move on, and then they continue, defeating several Kaiwakairo's minis, until suddenly, Cheyenne warns him that they will face the first boss, which in this case is a train with the scary face of the Kaioichiro, and when they are pressed by the train, a command appears on the screen, telling them to press a button repeatedly. At this Cheyenne warns him, saying that if Teo fails, he will see a super realistic hit and run scene, and then he starts to press the buttons like there's no tomorrow, until finally they manage to defeat the first boss, but still, Teo finds that situation not pleasant, and wonders why they are doing this. And as he pays more attention to the newspaper passing by in the background, Teo hears a report about a runaway train that has just crashed. Stop suddenly, and the reason that made him stop is still being investigated, in which Cheyenne explains that his game is on with the real world, so by stopping him in the game, she is able to stop a runaway train in real life too, and so she do your work without having to leave home. That being said, Cheyenne claims that this is a very exciting way to play games, and she just called Teo Ali for it. Help her with a task, as doing it alone would be a big hassle, and the task consists of cleaning an area of protesters who are protesting at a thermal power plant. And when he finds himself on a mission as dangerous as this, Teo starts to get scared, but Cheyenne doesn't even give him time. Think, and then starts the game, in which she explains that they must defeat the enemies that will come next, because this way they will complete the mission. And before going on the attack, she delivers an item for him, which is capable of reviving him only once, so Cheyenne asks for him to be careful with that item. And moving forward, Teo gets stuck on the walls and doesn't know what to do, and Cheyenne says he's a bad player, and states that a spy must have much greater precision than that. But while she humiliates him, Teo manages to get into a game mode called Knocklet, and then advances to the Invincible mode, leaving her in shame. And then she starts to feel jealous, and assumes that he is using cheats to get along so well, and while they argue, Mitsumi catches their attention and says that the main enemy is getting closer and closer. And then, Cheyenne goes into serious gamer mode, moving her body closer to the TV, in which she manages to get closer to the dragon, and finishes him off with just a single blow, but the enemies had another great asset, which was unknown. Even by the government, in this case, several other enemies begin to emerge, coming towards Cheyenne and Teo. And with that, Cheyenne notices that the situation is serious even for her, so she decides to call Shinzo to help them. However, Teo says that there is still a way to get around that situation, in which they use Teo's revive item on the dragon, and then they use the dragon itself to kill other enemies with its flames. And although Cheyenne finds this tactic a bit rude, she says she doesn't mind it that much, and in the middle of the battle, Cheyenne notices 
notices the presence of Kurosaki in the game, who, by the way, takes the opportunity to try to steal Teo's rare data in addition to taking some Mitsumi photos. In the middle of the game, she ends up being diverted to a different route, and as for Cheyenne and Teo, they both move on, killing the enemies with the help of the dragon, and after finishing, Teo falls to the ground tired and panting, and sighs with relief for everything is already over, so Mitsumi congratulates him on his excellent performance, as for Cheyenne, she just gives him a sideways smile, by mouth, and as for Kurosaki, she also shows relief at having gotten what she wanted, but soon after that her computer comes back, giving an error, corrupting the files she hacked from the Teo database. In this, the boy takes advantage of the end of the mission to congratulate Cheyenne for his hard work, and she, in turn, demonstrates. Still be surprised by Teo's ability to come up with that crazy plan from before, as it didn't cross her mind at all. Idea of using the revive item on the dragon and using it as a weapon. And although she congratulates him for this, Cheyenne decides to punish him because he used cheats and dirty tricks in the game, therefore he will have. They have to keep playing with her until they clear three more games, and upon hearing this, Teo starts to regret. And after spending three nights locked up with Cheyenne, the boy falls drooling on the floor, while Cheyenne continues playing without stopping. And when he sees a photo of Teo, Oga gets excited and says that the boy looks incredible, and as for Sway, he shows indifference. As for that, after all, nothing that isn't related to his mission interests him, and as for Teo, he receives a call from Nanao, asking him to pick him up somewhere. And while he trains with 500 kilos on his back, Teo is willing to go help him, in which Nanao says that he is in a place called the Evil Laboratory, and then, Teo finds the name of the place strange, but Nanao explains that this laboratory is the place where biological weapons, such as toxic gas, are secretly manufactured. And he, in turn, disguised himself and infiltrated that place with the mission of neutralizing a new weapon they are producing, in this case, the germ bomb, also known as Sodom. And if it explodes, this bomb has the power to exterminate all forms of life within a radius of 10 kilometers, and as it would be very dangerous to carry this bomb around, now decides to eat it. And upon seeing this, Teo despairs, but Nanao explains that the human body is naturally capable of eliminating any toxin, and in his case, his body is even more efficient in this regard, so it will take him around 3 hours to eliminate all to the toxins that the bomb contains. However, Nanao says that there is a problem with him having done this, in this case, he gets very sleepy, as his body will need to work a lot, and Teo notes that he is not even disguised yet, but Nanao states that he put everyone in that laboratory to sleep, so no one is seeing him now. And precisely because everyone is sleeping, he says that Teo can go to the place to get him, so Teo decides to hurry to get him out of the lab before anyone notices him. And upon arriving at the indicated location, he notices that it was very easy to access the laboratory, but Teo still feels that there is something wrong there, so he walks around the place suspiciously in holding his gun, in case of emergencies. And moving forward, he passes through a corridor with some injured security guards, and notices that the laboratory's security system was also breached, and although these things could have been done by Nanao, Teo continues to find it all very suspicious, and feels that there is another intruder in the place. And when passing by another security guard, he tries to attack him, but Teo is saved by two men and then Sway asks if Teo too, he's on a mission, and as for Oga, he's lost wondering where Teo is. In this Sway calls him myopic, after all the boy is literally in front of him, but Oga explains that he just lost his glasses, so he wouldn't be able to see things so well. And then, Sway reminds him that his glasses are right on his forehead, and then introduces his partner to Teo, and says he is, with Hinajuku, a government-operated intelligence unit, so the two are the spies for that organization. And their mission is to neutralize that laboratory, in which Teo notes that he has already heard of the name, Hinajuku, and unlike the Yazakura family, they are elite spies who actually operate within the framework of the law. And returning to the mission, he tracks the steps of approximately five people around the place, and in addition he smells the smell of parallel cartridges, which are tied somewhere. So Sway continues on his way, and Oga, in turn, calls Teo so they can do the mission together, and says he wants to get an autograph later. And as for Teo, he feels safe going with the two, after all they saved him until recently, and this shows that the two at least are not your enemies. And moving forward, Teo immobilizes two other security guards, leaving Oga impressed again. But Teo remains focused only on fulfilling his mission, which in this case is to get Nanao out of that place before he is seen by anyone in the laboratory. And when they arrive at the last laboratory, Teo finds his brother lying on the floor, but notices that he is just sleeping. Oga tries to attack him, but Teo stops him. And then, Oga explains that their mission is precisely to kill Nanao. After all their objective there is to completely neutralize that laboratory, and besides, Sway says that he heard Teo's conversation, and because of that they used him to get to Nanao, as that would make everything much easier, since the boy knew where to find the target. In this Sway states that Nanao became a threat after ingesting that bomb, so they must eliminate him along with that bomb, for the sake of national security. In other words, Sway says that they will only be able to fulfill their mission after killing Nanao, so Teo puts himself in front of him.
him and says that the two will need to kill him first if they want to continue with that. And then, Sway quickly immobilizes him and destroys his weapon, knocking Teo to the ground immediately and he explains to the boy that he acted very recklessly by letting his guard down towards two people he had just met, after all the right thing would be. Teo had shot them first, but instead he decided to wait and see what they would do. Having said that, Sway goes towards Nanao and promises to kill him painlessly, but Teo again asks him not to do that. But Sway states that he won't achieve anything just by asking him to stop, as besides being useless, it also sounds very pathetic. And before launching his attack, Sway is interrupted by Nanao himself, who says that he has already managed to finish detoxifying Sodom. And in addition, he shows a patch test, where he proves that his sweat is really not contaminated with any bacterial poison. That being said, Nanao asks Sway to at least let him take care of Teo's wounds, in case he still intends to kill him. However, Sway says that he won't need to do anything else with him, after all he no longer poses any risk to anyone, and so their mission is now complete. And before leaving, Sway gives Nanao an ointment, and explains that he can treat Teo's injuries if there is one quickly. However, he asks Nanao if the Yazakura family really needs him, because if that's all Teo's power, the best thing would be to let him die. And the next day, the boy is hung from the ceiling by Kaioichiro, and he explains that he saw an article in a magazine about what happened to Teo, so that is a punishment for the defeat the boy suffered in his last battle, as this made the Yazakura family's reputation went down the drain. However, Teo claims that Kaioichiro also has a hand in their bad reputation, but he disagrees, saying that this isn't the case. It matters so much, after all, Teo could have let Nana die if he made a false move. And then, Kaioichiro tells him that Teo must be ready to kill people if he needs to do that, but Matsumi goes to him and tells him to apologize to Teo, and then she takes the gag out of his mouth, and Teo says that his brother hers is right, after all he ended up tarnishing the name of the Yazakura family, and besides, Nanao almost ended up being killed because of him. However, Nanao says that he is wrong, and reminds him that it was thanks to him that he came out of that laboratory alive, but Teo states that he couldn't do anything, as he was too weak to face the enemies, so Kaioichiro goes to him, and says that the Yazakura family will not be shaken by the simple mess he made. But if the boy still wants to take responsibility for his mistake, Kaioichiro says that he can solve things in only one way, in this case, Teo will need to find the Hinajuku and destroy them, because only then can he restore the family name, Yazakura. And after that, he goes to the same subway as Sway, to follow him, but he is soon discovered, and Sway deduces that the boy is there to take revenge for what happened the other day, and upon hearing this, Teo tries to talk away, but he remembers the conversation he had with his brother Kaioichiro, where he told him to put an end to the Hinajuku, so that he could redeem himself for his mistakes. And as the Hinajuku are an organization of spies, the best way to defeat them is to steal their information, and to do this he must find a way to spy on the spy without being seen. And then, Teo explains to Sway that the just recognized his inexperience, and exactly for that reason, he intended to follow him, to learn from him the things he needs to improve. In this Sway says that he has never seen a spy say that he is following someone, so he sees this as very new, but he says, that the boy is free to do whatever he wants. However, Sway uses the, walking on flowers, skill to try to outwit Teo, and he, in turn, remembers that his brother Kaioichiro had told him about this skill, which Sway usually uses to infiltrate anywhere, but he he also uses it in battles, due to its excellent use in hitting his enemies by surprise, as was the case in the last fight he had with the Teo. And during the chase, Sway tears the boy's clothes, to be able to immediately lose him, and as the days go by, Teo continues to watch him constantly, but Sway also remains on alert, and continues to notice him in all his attacks. And on one of those days, Teo follows them at the end of an afternoon, and Oga praises the boy's determination, but Sway again destroys Teo's clothes, and upon noticing that he was unable to destroy the clothes completely, Oga makes fun of his friend, which in turn, if, stresses and leaves everyone naked. And meanwhile, Nanao returns home and asks about Teo, and Kaioichiro says that he was defeated by the Hinajuku once again, and, it was left unlit on the doorstep, so Nanao asks if he left Teo in his room, and Kaioichiro simply says no. And then, Nanao goes to the boy, and when Teo wakes up, he gives a yellow smile, saying that he was defeated again, in which Nanao says that he is trying very hard, and Teo remembers the situation he went through that other day, when he was defeated and almost let him die, therefore, he feels he needs to change, after all no one would accept him if he is so weak. However, Nanao says that he is wrong, because Teo is capable of doing things that no one can predict, and that is definitely not the characteristic of a weak person. And as for Kaioichiro, he says that Teo apparently enjoys being undressed, and then Nanao throws him away, and tells him to stop saying things that make Teo look like a pervert. And on the night of the next day, Teo spends the whole day following Sway, who in turn goes to a cemetery to polish a mysterious tombstone. In this Sway admires the boy's persistence in following him, and out of respect for that, he draws his sword and says he will give him one last coup de grace, after all for him Teo will never be able to defeat him, so he will finish off the boy to prevent him from wasting any more time on this. But when Sway tries to 
to attack him. Teo is able to predict the attack in time to defend himself, as his body has already gotten used to it, due to all the other times he has been hit. Sway notices why the Yazakura accepted him into their family, and asks his friend to take care of the boy's injuries, and Oga, in turn, praises Teo again, saying that he was able to dodge Sway's attack. However, Sway explains that Teo wasn't actually able to dodge, in this case, he just realized what his habits were, and with that he deduced where the blow would come from. But still, he believes that the boy has a lot of potential, therefore, his view of Teo changed for the better, and after that, the article that talked about the defeat of the Yazakura family had already fallen into oblivion. However, another not-so-nice fame fell on Teo's shoulders, in this case, he became known as the perverted spy, due to all the time Sway took off his clothes. And meanwhile, a crowd cheers during the Kuro Yuri party, and the group that is looking for this politician, they fail again when trying to capture him, after all, Yoshimasa's surveillance over them is very strong. However, Rin feels confident, and says she has a backup plan to put into practice, and meanwhile, Teo walks with Matsumi, as she asked him to help her with a task. However, he finds it strange that they are taking so many things, so they meet Sway sitting on a public bench, and when he sees that Matsumi knows him, Teo is surprised, but she says that they have been friends for a while. But still, she makes it clear that she is still angry about the incident involving Teo and Nanao, and Sway in turn explains that he was just doing his duty, so he doesn't feel like he was to blame for it all. And then, he decides to continue on his way, as the Hinajuku leader is waiting for them, so everyone heads to the Hinajuku cafe, which leaves Teo even more lost and without understanding exactly what mission they must do. In this, Sway takes advantage and asks for three Hinajuku Ultra Hyper Mega Deluxe, and upon hearing this completely cringe name, Teo deduces that Sway is playing with them, however, the attendant actually starts preparing the drinks, making it clear that they really they exist. But suddenly, he presses a button, which opens an abyss in the ground, dropping them 300 meters, whereupon Sway explains that this is the lowest level of the place, and they can only access this place because they are part of the intelligence unit, who in turn work for the government acting behind the scenes. And noticing that they still have time until they get to the boss's office, Sway suggests that Matsumi enjoy and drink his latte before it gets cold, and as for Teo, he gets slightly jealous when he sees him grabbing Matsumi like that. However, Sway explains that that place Place is very dangerous, so he must protect her, and as soon as he says this, they are surprised by automatic arrow shots, which serve both as a safety method and also for training, after all, if if they get distracted, they will arrive at the end of the tunnel in the form of minced meat. And after going through a mini hell on earth, they manage to arrive safely, but when Teo gets up thinking everything is over, a giant metal ball starts falling towards him. However, he is saved by the leader of the group Hinajuku, who, upon seeing how weak Teo is, wonders if he is really capable of protecting Matsumi. So, they go to a meeting, and and then, Matsumi introduces that girl as Rin, a former classmate of Kaioichiro's, whose main characteristic is to throw tea parties like the one they are having now. And upon hearing this, Teo deduces that the mission they were supposed to do was precisely this tea party, after all, the backpack they were carrying was only full of sweets. And as for Rin, she gets stressed when she hears Kaioichiro's name, and asks them not to mention it again, as it will interfere with the taste of her cake, and Matsumi explains that Rin and Kaioichiro are like oil and water, because they they don't mix. However, the only characteristic that the two have in common is this agitation towards Matsumi, but Rin says that she just wants Matsumi to marry some guy soon, just so she can be free from Kaioichiro's clutches. However, she believes that Teo won't be able to do the job, after all she found out about him from Sway, who made a point of not giving her a good impression, but upon hearing the insults she attributed to him, Sway states that he doesn't usually treating people in such a vulgar way, as it is only Rin who has this habit. And in this case, Sway makes it clear that he just described Teo as a terrible spy, however, Matsumi denies all of this, and says that Teo's soul is as strong as Kaioichiro's, in this, Rin gives a vote of confidence in her. And suddenly, the meeting is interrupted by Kaioichiro, who subtly arrives at the place, knocking down the wall, and then, he orders the Hinajuku to return Matsumi, otherwise they will have serious problems. In this, Rin goes towards him, calling him a pervert, and tells him to get out of there, as he is interrupting their tea party, but upon hearing this, Kaioichiro refuses to leave the place, and states that his sister will be corrupted just by being next to a vulgar gorilla like Rin. In this, he tries to throw his threads at her, but Rin intercepts them with just one punch, and says that he will never be able to cut her with these low quality threads, and as for Kaioichiro, he wonders how he will go about massacring and pack Rin's body. And as she says this, she attacks him again, which causes the building to start experiencing technical problems, as a result of which everyone in the building is instructed to leave the place as quickly as possible. And upon seeing this kind of confusion happening again, Matsumi regrets, and wonders why things always end up like this, so Sway decides to stop that confrontation, and asks Teo and Matsumi to go to the emergency exit. But upon hearing this, Matsumi tries to stop him, thinking that he could end up suffering serious 
serious consequences, however, the boy continues with his plan, but ends up being thrown away by Kaioichiro's threats. And then, Matsumi enters the middle of the two, but as their punches were almost meeting, the two are unable to stop the attack, so, Teo lowers Matsumi, and receives the blows in her place, becoming more blank than a blackboard from school. And upon seeing the situation taking on more serious proportions, Matsumi tells the two that if they cause more problems for everyone, she will never speak to them both again. In this, the two begin to panic, begging for her forgiveness, and Rin realizes that Teo is tougher than she imagined, and Matsumi, in turn, states that this is due to the fact that he is her husband. In this, Rin asks to speak to Teo, and after he wakes up, the boy is given the mission to disguise himself and go and investigate a politician, in this case, the dancing politician, known as Yoshimasa Kuroyuri. And he, in turn, presents himself as the solution to all of Japan's problems. However, Rin states that his appearance belies the image that he would be the politician with the most momentum at the moment. However, his conquests have a vast history of bloodshed, after all he has great spies as his right-hand man, and with them, Yoshimasa is able to use bribes, murders and much more to guarantee his rise in the political world. And at the moment, Rin says that he is about to take a big step before the next general election, after all, he has remained acting skillfully, away from any suspicion. However, the Hinajuku confiscated a miniature bomb in a case unrelated to the politicians, and the bomb in question leaves no trace, so its use is mandatory for assassinations abroad. And although they arrested the bomb smuggler, he couldn't see his client's face, however, Rin says he has a clue, as the smuggler remembered that his client wore bright clothes and a heart-shaped glasses, very similar to the politician Yoshimasa. However, Rin says that this simple evidence is still not enough to get a warrant against him, so they still need to get more information about his bombing plan. In this, Teo asks why she entrusted the mission of investigating him to him, and Rin explains that Yoshimasa is already aware of the Hinajika group, so using an unknown person like Teo would be the perfect plan. And to make him even more unrecognizable, Sway disguises him as a woman, and Rin explains that they need to do this, as Yoshimasa's party is hiring women with black hair and long eyelashes to help them. It is so, Rin tells him to get information off Yoshimasa whatever the cost, after all, there are lives on his shoulders now. But upon arriving at the place, enormous boredom consumes Teo, who asks to go home, whereupon a group of protesters opposed to the politician's actions appear in the middle of the party, calling him a tyrant. And in the midst of the confusion, the speakers fall on Yoshimasa, so he takes advantage of this opportunity, and manages to convert them to his side with just the power of speech. And then, he is taken by ambulance to treat his injuries, but already on the way, he reveals that he was not actually hurt, and congratulates his assistant Red for having timed the equipment to fall at the exact moment. And upon seeing the reaction of internet users towards his party, Yoshimasa notices that everything is going very well, so he asks his assistants to send the images to commercial networks, as this will increase his popularity even further, causing the heyday of that country passes into your hands. And meanwhile, Teo remains hidden and listening to the entire conversation, and guarantees that he will expose his plans whatever the cost, but when trying to look for more information about his plans, Teo simply remains at zero. And meanwhile, Yoshimasa's popularity continued to take off, and as for Teo, he continued without any conclusive information about the politician's crimes, until suddenly, he pays attention to the group's dance steps, and notices that there is a Morse code in every movement. And with that, Teo discovers that they are going to do one last check on the terrorist attack they are going to commit. And when the day arrives, Teo continues analyzing his movements, and discovers that Yoshimasa's plan is to eliminate the vice prime minister along with other enemies who will meet next week by placing a bomb under their stage. And when he tries to activate the bomb, it explodes inside a public fountain, as Teo managed to get it off the stage in time, and Yoshimasa points a gun at him, and says that there is still another bomb. In this, he shoots at Teo and fires his second bomb, however, Teo returns to his feet, as he was equipped with a shock-resistant jacket. And then, Yoshimasa and his henchmen aim their weapons at Teo again, but Sway appears just in time, destroying the entire gang's weapons. In this case, his assistants abandon him, and then Sway puts Teo on another mission, in this case, he must accompany the politician to the Hinajuku headquarters and hand him over to the boss. And on the way, the politician starts talking about Teo's past, as if he knew him, and makes it clear that the supposed accident that took the lives of his family was not really an accident. In this, he describes everything that happened that day, and says that Teo and his family were traveling by car on a rainy day, until suddenly, they fell off a cliff. And in the accident, only Teo Asano survives, which at first can be considered a, a miraculous feat, however, Yoshimasa states that some miracles can only be caused by man. At that, Teo points the gun at him, and asks what else he knows about his family. And, and when asked directly, Yoshimasa chooses not to answer Teo's question, but as a veteran of the underworld, he states that that world is full of hidden truths, and suddenly, Shinzo calls him, and asks Teo to watch a video urgently. And the video in question shows the deputy prime minister being recorded live after being kidnapped. In this, Shinzo explains that some intruder impersonated him while the minister was kidnapped, therefore, Shinzo 
believes that he was Yoshimasa's target since the principal. And then, he orders Teo to interrogate Yoshimasa immediately to force him to reveal the location of the deputy prime minister. And upon hearing this, Yoshimasa decides to act faster than the boy and throws a bomb on the floor of the vehicle, causing a huge explosion. And meanwhile, Nanao continues with some experiments, but he ends up blowing up everything around him. And then, Matsumi goes to see if his brother wasn't hurt, and he apologizes for having destroyed the entire room. However, Nanao explains that he was very anxious and uneasy about Teo on his mission, as he is worried about the possibility of him ending up getting hurt, and because of this, he decided to prepare some potion to heal any injuries that Teo may have upon returning from mission. And as for Matsumi, she says that she is also worried about Teo's situation, but she chooses to keep her feet on the ground, because thinking about it all the time won't help them with anything. And instead, she decides to make a big feast for when he returns home, after all, even if he comes back injured, he will recover quickly after eating all that food. That being said, Matsumi wonders what the others are doing now, and then, Nanao informs him that Kengo is designing a washable face gear so that Teo can use it if he comes home unrecognizable. Therefore, Kengo is already assuming that the boy will not return home well, and as for Shion, she remains in her room destroying the computers of the Yazakura family's enemies, and Shinzo, Nanao, considers him a lost cause, as the boy he was so worried about Teo that he spent the whole day hiding. And upon hearing all this, Matsumi becomes even more worried, after all, everyone is acting as if Teo isn't going to come home in one piece. And meanwhile, Kaioichiro and Futaba continue without moving a muscle in relation to Teo, and Futaba believes that there is no need to worry, because for her, the boy will come out of this okay. And as for Kaioichiro, he says the complete opposite, and wonders how horrible the death the boy will encounter will be, therefore, he sees that situation as something fun and not worrying. And as for Teo, he manages to escape the explosion, so he goes back to thinking about everything he heard from Yoshimasa in relation to his family, when suddenly he receives a call from Shinzo, and then he explains that Yoshimasa managed to escape, leaving he and the driver of the car behind. In this, Shinzo says that he already expected something like this to happen, and decided to hide this information from Teo on purpose. And when talking more about Yoshimasa, he reveals that this guy is not just an occult politician, but a spy, just like them. And his old pseudonym was Kurageo, a legendary spy who worked in the shadows around the world. However, he ended his career six years ago, faking his next death. In this, Shinzo explains that they allowed Yoshimasa to escape, only to follow him, and finally find out what he was doing. And as for the deputy first minister, he can be found through the GPS that the Yazakura family implanted in him. That being said, Shinzo says that Teo can return to headquarters. And then, the boy remembers when Yoshimasa told him that that world is full of hidden truths, and notes that he was indeed right in his statement. And meanwhile, the politician goes to the vice prime minister, and says he is there for the two to talk, and the TV reports begin to broadcast the recording of Yoshimasa to the public while commenting on the matter. And as for the minister, he says that even though he found Yoshimasa very eccentric, he thought he was a very committed politician, therefore, he claims to be disappointed to discover that this very respectable politician was just a crazy terrorist. And furthermore, the minister makes it clear that making this type of maneuver will not change the political climate, however, Yoshimasa makes it clear that he has no political interests, and then takes off his disguise, revealing himself to be the Kurageo, that spy presumed dead for all. In this, he says that he will no longer speak as the leader of the Kuro Yuri party, but rather as a father who lost his son, and then, he reveals that he has already inflicted his revenge on several politicians behind the scenes, but the deputy prime minister is the only one who knows this whole story. Therefore, he orders him to start speaking the truth, otherwise he promises to kill him, in which case the minister refuses to say anything. And before Kurageo can pull the trigger, the transmission is suddenly cut off, as Teo shoots the politician to stop his action, and orders him to let the minister go. However, Kurageo states that the boy is not capable of hitting him, as the shot from his electric pistol is not capable of reaching him. Having said that, he shoots Teo, who in turn, remembers a tip from Futaba, where she advised him to attack his opponent as soon as he attacks him, as this is the initial sign that the fight has already begun. With all, and by managing to immobilize the enemy, Teo feels that he is in control of the situation, however, Yoshimasa manages to break his attack, as he has already studied the Yazakura fighting style a lot. And to continue in this same vein, he decides to use the Yazakura's steel threads against Teo himself. In this, he notices that the boy has an expression of doubt on his face, and deduces that Teo is wondering how Yoshimasa is able to know so much about him. And then, he explains to the boy that his greatest skill is dealing with information, after all, for a spy this is something very important, but still, Yoshimasa says that it is necessary for the spy to know how to exploit the information he acquires. In this, Teo asks why a spy like him would want to ascend a political career, and he responds immediately that he just wants to get revenge. And to further contextualize this story, Yoshimasa explains that he has always been valued in political circles due to his abilities to deal with information. Until on a certain day, he returns home, and upon meeting his daughter dressed in that eccentric
eccentric way, the girl laughs, and says that the excess work must be affecting his head, after all, after his wife when he died, Kurageo went on business trips much more often. And that night, their house is destroyed by a bomb explosion, and Kurageo's daughter ends up dying in this incident. And Kurageo explains that after being discarded, the political milieu decided to do away with him and his family, but because he survived, he decided to pretend he died and then enter the political milieu undercover and managed to carry out his revenge. And then, he heads towards the deputy prime minister to eliminate his last target who was still standing. However, Teo again tries to intercept him but is stopped by Kurigeo's assistance. In this, Kurigeo makes a proposal to the boy, saying that if Teo backs down of his own free will, he will talk more about his family. However, Teo says that he doesn't need any information from him, and if there really are some hidden truths regarding to the accident with his parents, Teo will like to discover only the truth about that incident. And in the middle of the conversation, Sway appears there, opening a hole in the feet of Yoshimasa's assistants. Once that's done, he asks Teo to focus only on arresting the politician and rescuing the minister. In this, Teo attacks Yoshimasa, who in turn defends himself, and notices that the boy is attacking him with a blade designed by Shinzo, which can carry poison in its cavity. That said, he makes Teo stab himself with his own weapon, and throws him away, and the minister questions him if he really intends to kill people, and Yoshimasa states that this is a common thing to happen, after all, everyone die, as does his daughter. And meanwhile, Sway continues his fight against Yoshimasa's assistants, and after the three describe their skills, Sway notes that they are actually very arrogant for doing this, and so, he decides to show off some of his skills too, and it starts with the, walking on flowers, technique, which allows you to walk quickly and silently anywhere. And although this is a basic technique, Sway claims that if combined with his swordsmanship, it can be extremely effective. And then, the three enemies combine their skills and throw a ball of energy in Sway's direction, who, in turn, passes through it without much difficulty, and then finishes off the three assistants at once. And then, he remembers Teo and decides to go and help him straight away, but before he can leave the place, Sway hits the wind, and says he felt a presence nearby, although the place is still empty. And meanwhile, Yoshimasa tells Teo that he should understand him, since he also understands the pain of losing his family, and Teo says he understands him, after all, he spent all this time brooding over the death of his parents. However, upon meeting Matsumi, he learned that reality does not necessarily need to be accepted, after all, there are things that they are capable of changing, that said, he goes on the attack again. And as for Yoshimasa, he feels at ease with this new move, as he already knows all nine techniques that the boy can use. But exactly at that moment, Teo surprises him by showing him a new technique, in this case, walking on flowers, in the Hinajuku style. In this, Teo remembers when Kaioichiro taught him about the way some spies act, who, because they have all the data on their targets, feel that they already dominate them, and therefore, they are unable to react accurately after being surprised by something that new. In this, Teo manages to use the steel wires to trap Kurigeo and disarm him, and starts using atypical movements, which Kurigeo was not used to. And so, Teo finally manages to completely immobilize him, and Kurigeo, in turn, says he doesn't care much about his current situation, after all, he was already decided to give up everything, and analyzing Tayo's behavior, he notices that the boy followed a different path, because even though he lost his family, he refused to give up. And out of respect for his resilience, Kurigeo decides to tell everything he knows, but first, he receives a shot in the throat, which comes from some unknown place, and then, Sway goes there, and explains that some assassin must have killed Kurigeo to silence him. And at the end of that day, Teo follows a map given by Kurigeo, which takes him to the tree where his daughter is buried, and he asks the boy to take some white lilies and place them on his daughter's grave, as that is the her favorite flower. And furthermore, Kurigeo says in the letter that Teo must get what he is looking for from a hole in the tree. Once that is done, he returns to headquarters, and is welcomed by everyone, who are relieved to see that he has returned home safely. And after finishing the mission, everyone they return to the Hinajika base, and then the boss delivers a mountain of food to Teo, who immediately wonders what that is, and Sway explains that it is a Hinajiku hot pot, which in this case, is a special event which the boss organizes to thank her subordinates, giving them a meal prepared by her own hands. And in the middle of the event, they are surprised by Kaioichiro, who appears at the place uninvited, so the boss tells him to leave, and he, in turn, is promptly willing to leave the place, but before leaving, Kaioichiro decides to take some bottles of liquor from the place, and and as for the boss, she opens an excess for him, just to make him leave quickly. And meanwhile, Sway continues the event, and uses his sword to cut the meat of the animals in front of him, and with everything ready, Teo prepares a dish for Matsumi and delivers it, but Kaioichiro enters among them to prevent this, and says that he still doesn't have permission to give food to Matsumi. And upon seeing this, the boss scolds him, saying that Kaioichiro should stop being such an intrusive brother-in-law in his sister's relationship, and the two begin to fight, throwing food at each other. And even with trouble brewing, Oga decides to go to the pot to get 
get more meat but soon ends up being hit by one of the flying foods and then Sway uses his ability to walk on the flowers to get the dishes without being hit and once that's done the boy suggests that Teo be careful when trying to imitate this skill after all an amateur like him could end up getting hurt and after the meal Tayo takes the object he found when following the extravagant politician's map and is eager to open that small box as it contains information about the accident that his family suffered and suddenly Matsumi comes to him with a flashlight in the face giving him a huge scare in this she notices the boy with that mysterious box and wonders if he will open it now and Teo says he is scared to do that as he feels that everything will change after he discovers what is in that box because if he finds out that Kurageo was his family's killer Teo could end up becoming a murderer too therefore he believes that if he opens the box he could end up becoming a person like Kurageo and upon seeing the boy visibly shaken Matsumi gives him a kiss on the cheek to try to comfort him and says that regardless of the circumstances Teo will continue being him because his essence is immutable but in addition she states that she will stay by his side even if he ends up changing and Teo drops the box by accident and then a marble comes out of it leaving them both confused and then Kaioichiro goes to the two and explains that that item uses an optical data recording method and stores it in this type of air bubble with a laser and although the options to extract the data from the bubble are limited it is still possible to extract it and then he has the idea of recording Teo's last words in that same bubble however Rin stops him from doing anything and says he shouldn't lose his head over a simple kiss between the boy and Matsumi and as for the two they take the opportunity to escape the place and when they arrive home Teo feels his body heavier and soon notices Ayaka and above his shoulders in this he asks her to leave him but the Ayaka explains that she is recharging his energy and in addition the girl states that she is there to protect him and Matsumi from assassins and then Matsumi explains to him that she hired the girl as a resident with that said she calls Ayaka to teach her how to make tea but Teo continues to resist this idea as he believes that placing an external spy in the house is not a good idea idea and Matsumi says it will be okay after all they are talking about Ayaka and suddenly the girl talks about his last operation and then pick up the optical drive bubble from Thetayo at that Cheyenne analyzes it superficially and says that the bubble is a little old so it will take a while to be able to study it completely and as for Teo he finds it strange that Ayaka knows so much about him but in addition she says that she also found out about the increase in the reward they offered for his head and Ayaka in turn shows that she is pleased to see all these hostile intentions falling on Teo's shoulders and states that soon he will be reduced to a mere piece of meat that said she advises him to protect himself if he wants to preserve his marital happiness and to help him Ayaka decides to murder him regularly so that Teo will create an instinct against murderers and upon noticing how crazy the girl is he asks Matsumi again about the idea of keeping her in the house and she states that she will leave things as they are after all this is for his own good and at the end of the day Teo feels exhausted and decides to take a shower to go to sleep but first Matsumi offers him some tea and Teo promises to drink the tea before going to sleep and in the middle of his bath he is approached by Ayaka who tells him to pay more attention after all even in his bath he can be surprised by the enemy in this Teo tells her to stop that but she continues anyway and tries attack him with poison but instead of hitting him she ends up getting shocked with the bathroom's electrical trap and when he sees her in danger he tries to help her but Ayaka tells him to stay away because if he is electrocuted he will also become immobile like her so Ayaka asks him not to get involved in this however he insists on trying to help her and destroys the wall that holds the main energy source and when disarming the electrical trap he falls on Ayaka and says that she should be more careful with the training she applies to him after all what she did was very risky and in the middle of all this Kaioichiro goes to the place and reprimands Teo's attitude of being on top of a woman while he is without clothes in which Teo tries to explain himself but Kaioichiro presents him with an instrument of torture made by the Yazakura family in the period Edo called the stomach splitter and upon seeing this Teo decides to start running immediately but Kaioichiro follows him and as the afternoon falls Teo prepares for the mission but first Matsumi goes to him to hand over his cell phone and exactly at that time Keiru calls him but Teo simply takes his cell phone and turns it off leaving the place quickly then Ayaka appears behind her and says that this is a clear sign of betrayal and upon hearing this voice so suddenly Matsumi gets scared and Ayaka continues complaining about Teo's supposed betrayal after all he already has Matsumi as his wife in this she goes back to listing some other signs that he is cheating on her such as the fact that he always hides his location in addition to going out alone without giving any reason having said all that Ayaka suggests that Matsumi ends this relationship as soon as possible as soon and the next day she goes out for a walk with Teo and says that he has been working and running like crazy so she says she is happy to be able to spend that moment with him without all the fuss and Teo in turn notices that Goliath is also very happy as he is walking next to Matsumi and then she explains that he refuses to walk with anyone else after all he is a wolf dog which in this case is a special breed produced through repeated modifications since the 
Mid-Edo period. And in the middle of the conversation, Goliath becomes even bigger, and Matsumi informs him that he is an elite race, and that is why he has a durable body. And according to the records of their species, the wolf-dog race has served the Yasakura family since the generation of Matsumi's great-great-grandmother, so she climbs onto Goliath and asks him to do the same, however, before Teo even tries doing so, Goliath throws him away. And although Teo feels left out, he stays relieved to see the loyalty of Matsumi's servant, she hands him a leash to hold, and then Goliath begins to run quickly, dragging Teo by the leash. And at the end of the race, the boy remains unconscious on the ground, in which case, some children go to the Goliath, impressed by the animal, and suddenly, one of the children's balloon explodes with an implanted bomb, however, Teo manages to arrive in time to protect them. And upon seeing him all injured, Matsumi gets angry and looks for the culprit behind that explosion, whereupon Goliath smells the remains of the detonator that was stuck in the balloon and starts running somewhere specific. And then, Teo asks where he is going, and Matsumi explains that by analyzing the remains of the detonator, they can find its transmitter with the help of Cheyenne's equipment. In this case, the person responsible for activating the bomb becomes even happier, as he will have the privilege of meeting the head of the Yasakura family still alive. And as for Matsumi, she analyzes the way the killer's plan was put together, and claims that he is a complete amateur, and upon hearing this, the killer calls her arrogant, and says that she is the leader of the family in title only. And Matsumi, in turn, says that he is right in thinking so, after all, she is in fact a leader who does not have her own powers, however, she states that she will not let anyone hurt her family and go unpunished. That said, Goliath finally arrives at the scene and finishes off the killer, and after taking care of this matter, Teo notices that it's already late, so he decides to go home. In this, Matsumi asks Goliath to give them both a ride, and this time, he lets Teo ride on his back, however, upon arriving home, he is surprised by Ayaka's needles, who goes to him and calls him a traitor, and then she proves her point by showing a photo of him with another girl. In this, Kaioichiro attacks Teo with another instrument of torture, but before he can hurt him, the girl in the photo appears there in person to apologize, and introduces herself as Momiji Akikes, one of the members of Hinajuku. In this, she explains that she is there to deliver something to the boy, and Teo, in turn, reminds her that this was a secret delivery and that no one should have known, however, Momiji decided to do things this new way, to avoid these misunderstandings continue. And as for the man next door, he introduces himself as Keiru, Momiji's grandfather, and says that after a lot of effort, he finally managed to acquire the rare tea leaves, Dark Sweet, which is Kaioichiro's favorite tea. And furthermore, Keiru says that Teo was responsible for ordering these tea leaves for him, as he wanted to reward Kaioichiro for always taking care of him. And upon hearing this, Ayaka notes that Teo wasn't hiding a betrayal from Matsumi, and he just didn't tell her before because Matsumi would certainly tell Teo's plans to Kaioichiro. In this, he apologizes for having made her so worried, and as for Kaioichiro, he finds it strange that Teo did that for him, after all, he always treated him with as much contempt as possible. And then, Matsumi tells him to apologize to the boy, but Kaioichiro refuses to do so, and states that he would rather lose his life than apologize to a guy like Teo. And upon returning to training, Teo is surprised with the new Futaba weaponry, whose function is to improve his reflexes, allowing him to escape his shots. And after finishing, Futaba gives Teo a moment to rest, in which he goes to Matsumi to see what she is doing, and she explains that she found an album while cleaning the house. And when leafing through the album, she passes by a photo that catches Teo's attention, who immediately asks the context of the photo, in which Matsumi explains that they took that photo when Nanao passed the spy license exam, because the Yazakura have this as the default as soon as a new member of the family is announced. And upon hearing this, Teo asks what this spy license is about, and Futaba explains that this license is a card that the spy receives to officially belong to the Yasakura family. In this, she comments on an old organization made by spies, which aimed to promote mutual aid, and since then, all those who pass the exam carried out by the Espionage Association receive the spy license, thus becoming a member. Her. And after receiving the license, the spy will have access to information and job references granted by the association, and in addition, they will also be entitled to benefits such as the spy pension. And as for the ranks of spies, they start from the bronze classification, and if the spy passes the promotion tests, he will move from bronze to silver, and can reach the gold classification, where there are the most advanced and lucrative missions. In this, Teo says that he would also like to take the license exam, and Futaba, in turn, was thinking about waiting a little longer before recommending the exam to him, but when she sees that he is motivated enough, she changes her mind. And suddenly, Kaioichiro appears in the middle of the conversation, and says that he is also in favor of letting Teo take the license exam, however, he makes it clear that everyone in the family passed on the first attempt, and because of that, he starts putting pressure on Teo, saying he can't break this cycle. And upon hearing Ayaka's scream, they go to the place to see what is happening, in which Cheyenne explains that the program she was coding ended up failing, and in Ayaka's case, she was feeling guilty, because when cleaning the Cheyenne's room, she ended up changing the power cables by mistake, which resulted in that whole situation. And suddenly, the television turns 
turns on by itself and shows a girl with a white dress and long hair standing in the hallway of the house, at which point Futaba freezes in fear and Teo, in turn, finds her reaction strange, considering that Futaba is much stronger than any ghost. And then, Matsumi explains that zombies and other types of monsters can be eliminated by force, and that's why they don't scare as much, however, as Aiki doesn't work against ghosts and curses, Futaba Akana for not being able to kill them, which means makes her even more scared. Therefore, Matsumi says that they must wait until the next day for her to recover, when the wind suddenly opens the door, leaving Futaba terrified, and then, Matsumi reassures her, saying that it is just the wind outside. However, Cheyenne says that lately she has been hearing a lot of strange noises even though there is no one around, and in addition, she says that every now and then Goliath starts staring at the wall out of nowhere. In this, Cheyenne scares Futaba, saying that the spirits who hold a grudge against the Yazakura must be behind this, and after that, Teo notices Matsumi is already tired of taking care of Futaba, and so, he is willing to help her with this task, and as for the other brothers, they note that they will need take turns taking care of the girl. In this, Futaba asks Cheyenne to accompany her to the bathroom, and upon returning, they start watching TV, and as soon as the content turns to haunted things, Shinzo breaks the TV right away, and the other sisters put it on to watch a beautiful garden on your cell phone. But soon after, Kengo ends everything by scaring her with a dark fantasy, so Cheyenne tells him to stop it, and as the day goes on, Futaba continues to be suspicious of everything around her, including in common moments, like the bath time. And when it's time to sleep, Matsumi asks the girl to calm down, as Teo will be on guard while they sleep, however, the wind scares her again, so Matsumi pulls out his final trick, and decides to start read Futaba's favorite book until she falls asleep. And then, she explains that that was the same book they read to her when Matsumi was a child, so she asks Teo to continue the story in case she ends up falling asleep in the process. And when the story begins, it tells about an era of chaos, where demons and humans were in constant war, and upon hearing the beginning of the story, Teo begins to find it strange. In this, Matsumi continues reading the book, and says that a baby that was removed from the river of blood was named Mamataro by whoever welcomed him. And shortly after, Matsumi ends up falling asleep, and upon noticing this, Futaba feels scared again, and then, Teo decides to take the lead, and is willing to continue reading to her. In this, he says that the elderly woman responsible for collecting the baby was sure that Mamataro would be the person who would end the war between demons and humans, therefore, she chose to raise him. And after countless new battles and lives lost, Mamataro ends up killing one of the demons who was once his best friend, and then, he starts to cry subtly, and says that humans have no choice, therefore, they should just keep going with the flow of life. And as he continues reading, Teo continues to find that macabre story very strange, however, Futaba applauds him, and says that that story reminds her of when she was little. Having said that, she apologizes to him for making Teo see her in that pathetic situation, however, he appears not to be bothered by anything. In this, Futaba comments that her mother used to read this book to her all the time, at a time when she wasn't afraid of anything, however, with her mother's death, Futaba began to fear that her brothers would also end up leaving. In this, she feels like a failure as the eldest daughter of the Yazakura family, because instead of demonstrating strength in front of her brothers, she is trembling with fear and feeling powerless to protect everyone. And then, she reveals that she used the excuse of being afraid of ghosts to cover up her true fear, which would be losing her brothers, and upon hearing this, Teo identifies with this feeling, and says that this is what makes him want to be stronger and stronger, so he can protect his new family. In this, Futaba notices that it's already late, and so, she tells him to go to sleep too, but before that, she wishes him good luck when taking the license exam, and the next day, Teo starts taking the tests, and on the first he passes the test in front of everyone, leaving the other competitors surprised. However, when taking a lunch break, Teo is watched by one of the competitors, who shows a lot of hatred when he sees him taking the lead, and the guy tries to attack him, but is stopped by Hashifuru, who reminds him about being fighting between examinees is prohibited. In that, Teo thanks him for helping him, and Hashifuru says he's just protecting who he loves, and then the boy catches a drop of sweat on Teo's face and pours it on his tongue. And upon seeing this scene, Teo Matsumi pulls away from Hashifuru and points a gun at him, saying that the boy is a perverted maniac, and Hashifuru says that there is no need to have a gun pointed at his head, since Teo has already shot him in the heart. And upon seeing who the boy is, Matsumi recognizes him immediately, and says that he is the number one playboy in the world of espionage, and is known for flirting with anyone who appears in front of him, regardless of gender or age. However, Matsumi asks the boy to at least not hit on his husband. In this, Hashifuru continues to be strange, and shows a doll he made of Teo, and the girl on the intercom informs them that they should return to the testing site, as they will soon return to their activity. And then, Hashifuru takes Teo's hand to go with him, and the next test is, Escape from the Water, which consists of freeing himself from the chains to escape from drowning, and Tayo in turn passes the test with the greatest ease in the world. In this, Hashifuru praises him, saying that the boy looks beautiful when he is soaked. And after the end of the test, they begin the test called Hidden Demon, which consists of running away from a monster that tries to kill him whenever 
he sees him and in the midst of his escapes Teo ends up accidentally falling into Hashifuru's arms. Then, he walks away and comes face to face with two other hidden demons who immediately begin to chase him. And upon passing the test, he moves on to the next one, the objective of which is to defuse a bomb without blowing himself up along with it. And Teo accomplishes the task very easily and moves on to the written test. And having finished these tests, Teo is visibly exhausted. And then, Hashifuru offers his arms for him to rest, but Teo continues to deny his advances as always. And after that, they complete the spy license exam, and the girl on the intercom tells them to go to the end of the corridor to get their licenses, but before that, she states that the room they are in will be destroyed, to guarantee the privacy of the exam. In this, everything around starts to crack and break, and then, the examinees run desperately to leave the place, however, that same competitor from before knocks Teo to the ground, leaving Hashifuru extremely angry, and then, he uses his fan to blow Teo to a firm platform. But in return, the boy ends up falling into the abyss, however, Teo rushes to rescue him, in which case, Hashifuru uses his fan again and blows them both onto the platform, and then, he says that Teo passed his test, in this case, he wanted to test the boy's humanity. And in addition to him, the other competitors were also tested by other spies, because in addition to being skilled, a spy must also be trustworthy, after all, in this environment there are many betrayals. And in the case of Teo, who had already gained the trust of the Yazakura family, Hashifuru says that he was already expecting him to be a fair person. That said, he hands the license to Teo and congratulates him on his new achievement, in which Teo thanks him, and says he is relieved to discover that he was pretending to like him. However, Hashifuru claims that this part of the story is still true, so he asks him to give him a celebratory hug, but when he sees that the boy is still as perverted as ever, Teo starts to run away from him. And when organizing a party to celebrate Teo's victory, they notice that Kaioichiro is late for the celebration. But as soon as they comment on this, he appears in the room destroying the ceiling, and explains that he ended up making the ceiling too thin when trying to adapt it to spy on Matsumi. And upon hearing this, Futaba connects the dots, and notices that he was the one making those sinister noises around the house, so he asks the girl to calm down, however, she breaks all his bones before taking the celebratory photo for Teo license. And when returning to the place where you left the old man, Seiji notices that he simply disappeared, and then, the old man reappears inside a bag in the Yazakura family's house, and upon meeting Teo, he explains that the house's facial identification is renewed every year, so he needs go to the place for a visit every now and then. That being said, the old man introduces himself as Teo's considerate grandfather, but upon hearing this, the boy shoots him, believing that he is actually an intruder, but soon after all this confusion, Teo finds out about the entire real situation, and apologizes to Matsumi for freaking out out of nowhere. However, she claims that anyone would have had the same attitude as him in that situation, so she decides to start the introductions again, and says that that man is Grandpa Ban. At that, he jumps on both of them, and praises the good reflexes that Teo had at that moment, and Ban says he is calm now, because Matsumi really has a good husband by her side. Having said that, he takes a sum of money out of his pocket and hands it to them as a way of congratulating them on their wedding. In this, Matsumi suspects that he is there with another objective in mind too, and Ban immediately says yes, and then, he pulls Teo for a fun walk with him, but before they can leave the place, Kaioichiro stops them with his wires, and asks what Ban is doing there. And upon seeing him so suddenly, Ban says that he expected him to be on a mission abroad, and Kaioichiro in turn explains that he actually received an urgent call from the police, in this case, his duty is to bring the condemned man back fugitive, called Ban Yazakura. In this, Ban asks him to be more tolerant, as he will just have a little fun and go back to jail, but upon hearing this, Kaioichiro refuses to let him go free, after all, Ban is a guy capable of revealing secrets easily, just to impress the women in town. Therefore, Kaioichiro states that he will only be allowed to leave in cases of emergency, but upon seeing him so arrogant, Ban reminds him that he was the one who changed Kaioichiro's diapers, and then, he challenges him to arrest him if he is able. In this, Ban escapes Kaioichiro's threads and escapes from the house with Teo, and suddenly, Seiji calls to find out more about the progress of the mission, and Kaioichiro informs that the target managed to escape, however, he claims that Teo is tracking the old man, therefore, he will send the coordinates to Seiji later, and in the meantime, Golia takes a photo to Matsumi, which depicts the old man and his wife when they were both still young. In this, Kaioichiro calls Teo, and explains that Ban is extremely dexterous and flexible, which makes him very effective in escaping and entering any type of facility. And because of this, he has already managed to gather a lot of data in these last decades of activity, therefore, Kaioichiro suggests that Teo beat him, if necessary, as letting him loose is a danger to both society and himself. That said, he asks where the old man is, and Teo explains that he went to a members only bar, and is hitting on every woman he sees, and Ban begins to instigate the girl's curiosity, asking if they would like to hear some of your secrets. And upon realizing the alarming situation in front of him, Teo begins to despair, and tries to stop the old man catching him, however, Ban manages to escape from him easily, and states that the boy 
boy is too young to be able to hold him. But when he sits back down on the sofa, the old man ends up being trapped in the glue that Nanao made, and Teo feels that he has finally managed to stop him. However, Ban breaks away from the glue easily, leaving his clothes behind. And then, he explains that the only thing in the world capable of stopping any of his actions is a beautiful woman. With that said, he decides to give Teo training, and after trying to catch him countless times, Teo becomes extremely exhausted. And Ban, in turn, states that he will still need to train for many years to be able to at least sadden him, and Teo asks why he had to work so hard to get out of prison. After all, he could just wait for his mission to finish and go visit them another day. However, Ban says that this should happen on this exact day, and while they are talking, the waiter brings him his wife's favorite sake, making him more excited, and then, he offers some of the drink to Teo, however, the boy refuses, because he is underage. In this, Ban explains that being a spy has to do with smoking, drinking, and women, and when he sees Teo acting this way, Ban calls him a boring beta, and deduces that if things continue like this, Teo will never give him a great-grandson. And upon hearing this, Teo coughs up all his coffee, and then, Ban decides to talk a little more about what it was like kissing his wife, however, Teo refuses to know these things. In this, the old man describes his wife as a beautiful, smiling, dark-haired woman, and says that before he met her, he was a guy who didn't care about much, until suddenly, he met Keiko, who enlightened him. His thoughts, freeing him from the reckless life he was leading. And at a certain point, Keiko realized that he cared more for her than for himself, so she asked him to take that same care of him too. In this, Ban states that Keiko was a very good woman, especially for someone like him, and since Teo is exactly like him, Ban felt more comfortable talking about these things with him, after all, he also married a Yazakura. In this, Ban says that their life will not be eternal, therefore, he suggests that the boy live very well in the present, so as to never regret anything. And upon hearing this, Teo states that he doesn't need to worry about anything, as being by Matsumi's side made him happier than he could have imagined, therefore, he has no regrets about his actions, and states that he will make Matsumi feel the even for him. And after drinking a little more, Ban decides to take the boy to another even better bar, but before he moves a muscle towards the exit of the place, Keiko goes to him and arrests him, and explains that if he tries to break those handcuffs, they will explode on his wrists. And then Matsumi goes to the place too, and apologizes for them arriving so late, and then she introduces that lady as her grandmother Keiko. And as for Ban, he hugs her as soon as he sees her, and Teo is confused, as he believed that the lady had died. In this, Ban shows Keiko her favorite sake and also a diamond ring, which he bought just for her, and then, he asks her out on a date, however, Keiko reminds him that they still have work to do, so he is placed in the vehicle that will take you back to prison. And amidst shouting, the old man says that this is their wedding anniversary, so Teo understands why he escaped from prison on that very day, and as for Matsumi, she reports that she had also forgotten about it until she saw the photo of the two of them together. And in the middle of the conversation, she remembers when she arrived at the bar and heard him say that she makes him happy, and then, Matsumi takes his hand, and meanwhile, Ban tells his wife that Matsumi found an excellent husband, and Keiko in turn claims that she has also found her ideal husband. And the next day, Ban returns to the Yazakura house after escaping from prison again, however, Ayaka explains that there is no one at home, as they went out to do the monthly shopping for the whole family. And after leaving shopping, Matsumi asks what they are going to do now, and everyone informs them that they will go to a different place, so they decide to separate, and Kaioichiro tries to do the same, but Futaba reminds him that he needs to take care of Ban. At this point, he tries to talk things out, however, Matsumi immediately convinces him to go do his duty. Once that's done, she heads to the mall with Teo, who immediately remembers that place, as he used to visit it with his family. And seeing him so distracted, Matsumi asks if something happened, and Teo says no, so they go to a vending machine, and Matsumi buys some hand grenades as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Once that's done, they leave for another establishment, where Matsumi asks for an iron tapioca, and Teo stands in the corner thinking she's gone crazy, and wondering about this iron tapioca. And as if that weren't enough, the attendant also shows that her mental faculties are not up to date, as in addition to offering the option of a credit or debit card, she apparently also accepts blood or eyeballs as a form of payment. And after picking up his purchases, Matsumi explains that the expression, tea with milk, means pistol, and rifles are, coffee, in this, Teo begins to have an idea of what that place is, in this case, it is an establishment dedicated to serving spies, assassins, or members of the underworld. And meanwhile, Futaba goes to the Masus, who soon notices the girl as very rigid as always, and then, she suggests that the girl takes more care of her body, after all, this is our only natural asset, and it must be taken care of regardless of our age. And as for Nanao, he goes to a specialized pharmacy, which has everything he needs, and Kaioichiro, he opens a secret passage in a library, and goes to the shopkeeper, who in turn, had already separated the his request before Kaioichiro arrived, so he takes his book and starts laughing evilly, as if he was about to do something. And meanwhile, Teo buys a bulletproof shirt, and sends a message to Matsumi saying that he is coming back to her, however, on the way a girl touches his arm crying, so he takes the child with him, and explains to Matsumi that the girl was lost 
lost from her father. And when talking to her, Matsumi discovers that the child's name is Suzu, and the girl reports that her father was taken away by some scary guys who called him to have a talk downstairs of the building. And upon hearing this, Matsumi immediately understands what is happening, and then they go to the elevator and press the buttons to take them to the basement, which in this case is a place without signage, and which has a black market with items too absurd to be sold on the surface. In this, they arrive underground, a place known as Jane Cave, and as they walk through the place, Suzu starts to get scared of the environment, but Matsumi reassures her, saying that everything will be fine. And suddenly, the girl's father is seen being pressured by a bald crazy man, who offers some alternative payment methods to pay off his debt, in which, Teo acts quickly, immobilizing the guy, but as soon as he does so, they are surrounded by several other dangerous men. In this, the bald man shows a wanted poster of Teo, with the bounty on his head being $500,000, and this makes everyone even more thirsty to catch him, however, Kaioichiro appears just in time, and puts an end to the entire threat. Easily. In this, Teo notices a torture tutorial book in his hand, and deduces that Kaioichiro is thinking about using that on him, and as for the guys there, they notice that it will be impossible to beat the eldest son of the Yasakura family, and soon they think about give back. However, the bald man decides to continue the fight anyway, and then all the other Yasakura appear to help them, and quickly finish off all of the bald man's associates. In this, the entire building begins to shake after the fight, and then the newspaper reports that the first floor of the Jayan Mall has completely sunk, and meanwhile, the Yasakura family leaves the place as if nothing had happened. And, and in a dream from your past, Taya teaches his younger brother how to play some games on the tablet, in which the boy is surprised by his older brother's skill, and as for their mother, she says she would be happy if she saw him dedicating all this excitement to studying instead of electronic games, in that, Teo says he doesn't see a problem with that. And then, the mother says that the boy's passion for games is similar to their father's passion for work, as he even puts his family in the background, just to focus exclusively on work, so he tries chat, and says that thanks to their vacation, they were finally able to take a camping break. But when he sees that it started to rain on that very day, he apologizes for that, however, Teo says that everything is fine, and as for his younger brother, he asks to play, but Teo says that he will just finish that mission and will deliver it soon the tablet for him, however, in the middle of all this, the accident that would take the lives of his entire family happens, and then, Teo wakes up scared and with a bad feeling, so he goes to Cheyenne's room, and she, in turn, says that she has already analyzed the optical storage device that Teo acquired from the former spy, Kurageo, and according to her analysis, she says that the device contains the list of guests for a Yazakura wedding party, in this case, it was the wedding of the ninth chief, who in turn, were their parents, and as for the participants, they they were mostly made up of civilians, therefore, Cheyenne believes that the party was organized for the public, after all, the Yazakura treat this ceremony as something commonplace. However, Cheyenne was surprised to see that Teo's parents' names were on that same list, and although they can't draw conclusions based on that list alone, Cheyenne says that even before they were born, there was a connection between the Yazakura and the Asano. And upon hearing this, Teo remembers what Kurageo told him, about the supposed miracle of him coming out alive from the accident that killed his entire family. However, Kurageo made it clear that some, miracles, may simply have some human hand behind it. In this, Teo says that he is already prepared for any impactful information he may receive, however, when he looks to the side, he sees Matsumi completely in shock, as if he had received the most embarrassing news ever. At that, she says that she can no longer look him in the eyes, after all, Teo probably lost his family because of the Yazakura, and then, he consoles her, and says that they are still not sure what exactly happened, and besides the furthermore, he is willing to leave these things in the past and move on with her, after all, what he is today is thanks to what Matsumi did for him, therefore, Teo asks her to forget about this matter, and then, he asks Cheyenne to help him unravel these mysteries involving his family, and she readily offers to help him, after all, they are both brothers, however, they are still confused about what they need to do in relation to that, and as for the fact that the old boss's data still exists, Cheyenne deduces that this has some relationship with the underworld. In this, she has the idea of going to the organization that collects data on people who disappeared without leaving a trace, in this case, this place is known as the, Library of the Dead, and then, they go to a secret area that gives access to a long staircase, and while Teo goes down to the place, Cheyenne explains that he can find out the real reason why his parents died, that said, she asks him to stay alert. And meanwhile, one of the guys who was already in the library starts talking loudly, and then the librarian next door tells him to be quiet, after all, with all that scandal he would disturb the peaceful sleep of the dead, and upon seeing the incisive manner as she takes care of the place, Teo is slightly scared, and Cheyenne explains that the local librarian loves the dead, and therefore takes very good care of them. Therefore, if he makes any noise in his castle, it called result in his death. However, the penalties depend on the distance and volume emitted by the individual, and if he sneezes, this will generate a death penalty. However, Cheyenne says that the librarian's classification is silver, therefore, she is not capable of killing him in a direct confrontation. And in this case, the only annoying thing about
about her is that the girl usually patrols the premises in silence, however, Cheyenne states that Teo will be fine as long as he doesn't make any noise, and then, she notes that she should be careful with the headphones that is using it to listen to it, after all, if their sound escapes, it could generate some type of punishment for him. Therefore, Cheyenne turns down the volume and starts to guide him with the volume at minimum, and during his search through the library, Teo almost drops a book on the floor but manages to catch it in time to make a noise, and after searching for a long time, he notices that the way the books are separated is very difficult to understand. In this, he feels that he will get nowhere, until suddenly, he finds a category about events that occurred 10 years ago, and there are also things that begin with the masculine, A, and then, he feels that he is getting to where he would like, and as soon as he begins his search, he finds some documents with the name, Haida Sano, in this case, his father's name. In this, he opens the document and discovers that it contains all of Hyde's information, including information about his work, family, and even the way he died. However, Teo finds nothing regarding the cause of the accident, and then, he starts to feel disappointed, thinking he wasted his time going to the place. However, when he pays more attention to the sheets, he notices that there is a tablet-style slot for optical storage devices, so he places a device in that empty space, and with that, Teo has access to more information, where he says that the whole family Yasakura would have been eliminated by Tanpopo. And upon having access to this information, Teo finally has confirmation that the fatality that occurred to his parents was not an accident, and as soon as he reads this, the book simply explodes in his hand, disappearing completely, and Cheyenne says that he is in danger, therefore, he must leave the place as soon as possible. And as for the librarian, she starts running towards the place where he is, and Cheyenne informs him that she will arrive in just six seconds, and according to the laws of the place, the noise caused by him will sentence him to death with however, when the girl tries to attack him, Teo ducks in time to be killed, and the librarian claims that he violated the memories of the dead by taking that action, and meanwhile, Cheyenne tells him where the exit is, so that he can get out of there as soon as possible, and then, he shoots the switch, erasing all the lights of the place, and then, Teo begins to follow the route indicated by Cheyenne. However, the librarian is still on his tail, and says that even with the lights off, she is still able to hear the sound of his soul, which vibrates in his glass ears, and Teo starts to get really scared, and says that this girl is just a really crazy tyrant. At that, she goes after him, and then, Cheyenne instructs him not to attack her, because instead, the best thing to do is to take a few steps back and enter the hole in the corridor that is on his left side, and then, Matsumi tells him to take off his headphones. And as soon as he does this, she increases the volume on the stem and gives a very loud scream, leaving the librarian completely stunned, and upon seeing this, Teo understands why she doesn't like any noise in the place, after all, she has an ear very sensitive. And as for what he read in his father's documents, Teo only remembers the word, Tanpopo, and even though he only has this information at hand, he already considers this an excellent clue, and after that, he meets with Kaioichiro to discuss about the word, Tanpopo, and then, Kaioichiro is amazed to discover that Teo's family was also victims of Tanpopo. In this, he reveals that this same organization was responsible for killing Matsumi's mother, in this case, the previous boss, and although he tried to gather as much information as possible about Tanpopo, Kaioichiro never managed to find them, however, he already knows that this organization is one of those who is also interested in Matsumi, and in addition, the Tanpopo agents have a dandelion tattoo. In this, Kaioichiro states that he managed to make some progress with the information that Teo brought him, after all, as the boy's father worked in the field of medicine, Kaioichiro managed to restrict his investigation to the medical industry, and this in turn, led him to data very interesting. And then, Kaioichiro explains that in the month before and after the Asano family accident, 15 people from the medical field died in accidents, and in the meantime, the same man interacted with all these people. In this case, Kaioichiro is talking about Makoto Kawashida, the director of a clinic named after him. And although he is not the mastermind behind everything that happened, Kaioichiro remains suspicious of Makoto, so he and Teo decide to expose the truths about Tanpopo, and then, Teo and Matsumi enter the Kawashida clinic in disguise. And upon realizing that he is upset about something, Matsumi asks what is happening, and Teo explains that he is just bothered by the weights that Kaioichiro placed on his body to make him move slowly. In this, they are called to Makoto's room, and when examining Teo, Makoto is surprised to see that the old man has all his teeth in his mouth even at that age, so Teo continues to disguise and pretend to be a sick old man. And when leaving Makoto's room, Teo says that he gave her the feeling of being a genuine doctor, in which, Matsumi goes back to pretending to be a worried and caring wife and puts the food directly in his mouth. However, Teo says that he already can coerce alone since there is no one looking at them. But, she reminds him that they are undercover, therefore, they cannot let their guard down at any time, so they take advantage of being disguised as old people and begin to imagine what their lives will be like when they are really at that age. And meanwhile, Makoto goes to Dr. Tanaka and says that he will leave the rest of the work with him, and then, he goes to another area of the clinic, whereupon, Teo takes the opportunity to access the director's office, and when checking that that is on the computer, he notices that at first there is nothing wrong, but as he searches the computer, Teo ends up finding 
some folders with strong passwords. In this, he uses Cheyenne's device to analyze the device's hard drive and reveal the encrypted data on the machine, and when doing so, Teo comes across a text document called Samayoshino Project, and when reading, he finds some information about the five senses of the Yazakura family, which in turn is called Samanina. And this substance proves to be effective even when applied to people outside the Yazakura family, and because of this, their blood is considered a very powerful doping agent, however, Samanin cannot be manufactured synthetically, and therefore, it is necessary for them to have the heart of Matsumi, as only then will it be possible to have access to a vast amount of Samanin. And while he reads the material, Makoto tries to kill him behind his back, and then, Teo asks if he was responsible for killing his and Matsumi's family, and Makoto, in turn, states that it doesn't make any difference that he knows that, after all, not even the Yazakura are able to stop them. In this, Teo sees the dandelion symbol on Makoto's neck, which gives him away as a member of Tanpopo, and then, Teo tries to hit him with his stun gun, however, Makoto resists the attack and manages to escape with him, with the computer, but first, he suggests that Teo prolong his life, forgetting everything he saw there. However, Teo manages to save all the data on his flash drive, and promises to expose all of this, as a way of protecting Matsumi. And my friends, business is getting better very, very seriously the guy found out who killed his own family the guy found out who killed his mother-in-law and the guy found out who wants to steal his wife's heart and we're not talking about Tolerico the guy really wants to steal her heart the guy is really wanting to steal the organ so let's see how this goes. Let's go there are 25 episodes so I'll keep bringing it to you during this season leave a like subscribe and I'll see you in the next video I went.